Looks like we're good, Mike. Uh, the bar is still filling on my screen. All right. Uh, and we're good. Okay. Um, thank you, Mike. Good evening. Um, I would like to call the joint meeting of the Land Use and Building Management Committee and the Recreation, Parks, and Cultural Affairs Committee to order. It is 7.03 on June 7th, 2023. Um, following this meeting, we will have our regular meeting of the Land Use and Building Management Committee um, right afterwards. Um, so I will begin first by just um, saying that um, I just want to acknowledge Tom Livingston, um, you know, who has chaired this committee for so long. We got to say, there's Tom, Tom's with us tonight. Uh, glad you could make it, Tom. Um, you know, we got to say goodbye to Tom at a common council meeting, but this all happened so quickly that he left us for his big fancy job in City <laughs> Hall. Um, so I just want to acknowledge uh, your leadership here, Tom. You know, my very first committee meeting as a common council member was land use and building management. And you have been such a constant here. And so, uh, you know, when our council president, Greg Burnett, called me and asked if I'd help out here a little bit, you know, just to get us through for a few months um, to pitch in and chair this committee for <laughs> for a bit. I, I, well, of course, I'm happy to help, but uh, it, it's, you know, it's tough shoes to fill. And so I just wanted to acknowledge that, Tom. So thanks so much. Well, thank um, you. And then uh, roll call for uh, the Land Use and Building Management Committee. Uh, we have Greg Burnett, David Huvelman, um, Heidi Alterman is with us, Nicole Ayers, um, and myself, Barbara Smith. And then I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to uh, Darlene Young, the Chair of Recreation and Parks to call roll for her committee. Uh, thank you, Chairperson Smith. Um, so for roll call, we have Nicole Ayers, we have Josh Holstein, uh, Jen McMurr, and Lisa Shanahan, and myself. So we do have a, uh, and, and just to say a few words before we get started with this, um, it, it's been a long time coming for this project. Um, it, it's, it's long overdue, but I'm glad we're at this point and that the city is now really looking to, to manage this I know it might be something that we were hoping someone else would do, but I think, you know, as time will show that this is probably the best um, outcome for the community to have a center um, that is coordinated and facilitated by the city. So I'm just excited to hear the next steps in this process um, as we move forward together. Thanks, Ms. Young. Um, Public participation is next. Do we have anyone who has signed up for public participation? And it is specific um, this time to the Recreation and Parks or the Recreation Center. Uh, we will have a second public participation afterwards for the land use. So um, if there is anyone who would like to comment on the um, on the Recreation Center, please raise your hand. Uh, I am seeing that Diane Loricella has her hand raised. Okay. I for will... can, um, can before she starts, we acknowledge that uh, Council Member Meek has shown up at, I don't know the time. What is it? Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. And he is a member of both committees, obviously. And Mr. Meek, you're, uh, you're listed as Common Council. So if you wouldn't mind changing your name, um, that would be great. The person whose tile is right next to um, them also is labeled Common Council. It would be Council Person uh, McMurr. I'm sorry, I don't know everyone's name. Oh, no, it's okay. Okay. Yeah, Jen, um, you as well, if you would change your name. Thank you. Um, okay, and Ms. And if you could, Ms. Loricello, if you would like to speak about the community center, um, we could just, if we could move her over. Yeah, I'll do that now. Okay. Okay. Okay, Diane. And she should be able to speak now. Okay. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, for the record, my name is Diane Loricella. Uh, I too am happy that we are planning uh, some, some renovation or some changes for this building. Um, I had sat in on many of the previous iterations of the plan. Sorry about the YWMCA. Um, I will just say that 
in order for this program to go forward, I uh, would like there to be a upfront promise to the people of Norwalk, especially South Norwalk, that this building will be run by solar power and possibly geothermal. Um, I will say that the policies of this committee in the past and of the city and the staff has been for buildings that aren't new or there are no additions that are new, that they will not place solar panels on a building. That is a wrongheaded policy that other cities throughout the state have overcome. This particular place had a partial roof replacement. And I know you'll be hearing otherwise from the staff and their consultants because I've sat through numerous land use and building management committee meetings with a former chair who is now our um, staff, uh, chief of staff. Uh, all of the rest of you, I'm, I've been happy to speak with you about this, but you will not call me for a conversation over coffee. This building needs to be, we need to offset the cost to the uh, taxpayers to allow and afford a um, curriculum enhancement for kids, especially in South Norwalk. And there's no, there's no excuse why this building should not have at least solar, including ground mounted solar, including possibly covering the parking lot with canopy solar, including the roof solar. So no matter what Mr. Lowe and others will say to you, it would be unacceptable if this building does not have renewable energy included in running almost the entire building, depend upon what you have inside where we don't have a pool. I really wish this building in the back had the potential for a pool. Lastly, I just wanna say there are is some unfinished business from Ryan Park and it's related to this. And that is that there was not a continuation of the PCB contamination of the soil right on the fence line. I do not think that this project will in any way touch that, but you need to know that the Ryan Park cleanup project was not completed as well as I think it should have been. So just be aware for any penetration into the ground, there may be an aftermath of the Ryan Park cleanup that you may wanna look into. So with that, thank you, but please consider solar and ask for it instead of asking a question and getting the usual answers from the staff and the policy of this committee, just say, why not? Why can't we have solar? Let's do it. Thank you Thank very you, much. Ms. Thank you, Ms. Laricella. Um, is there anyone else who would like to speak on this item? I don't see anyone myself. Okay, seeing none, I will close public participation and move on to the presentation on the proposed redevelopment of 98 South Main Street for new Norwalk Community Recreation Center. Um, just to echo Ms. Young's um, comments, you know, this has been a long time coming. We were so excited about the why and then so disappointed when they pulled out. So, you know, there's been a lot of effort um, around uh, getting us here. And so um, we're, we're pretty excited to see the presentation tonight. So I will turn it um, over to Alan. You're going to get us started. Sure. Okay. Uh, uh, for those members of public uh, that's not familiar with the building, um, at, uh, this building is on 98 South Main Street. Uh, it was constructed in 1980s, 83, 84. Uh, it's under the auspices of uh, Neon back then as a community center, as a South Mall community center. Um, uh, through the year with uh, Neon's departure back almost 10 years now, uh, the city actually has, um, fit, uh, has some first right of refuse, refusal and kind of, um, co-ownership kind of thing. Um, it's very complicated uh, legal real estate kind of uh, relationship. In any event, at some point this, when, they, when Neon uh, moved on, uh, the city acquired the other, the, the remaining share of the property. And so the city owns the entire property. Um, currently, there's only one tenant in the building, it's, which is uh, AmeriCare, uh, and also Valley uh, um, um, Young's group. I forgot their name. I'm sorry. Uh, you can, I 
I guess. Oh, you can, uh, yes. Right. Uh, yes but, you they, can. but you folks are not really active in the building at, at this moment, but there's a, a short term lease, I think it's seven years. And um, again, I don't have all the detail about it, but generally speaking, in terms of daily operations, only uh, uh, AmeriCares in the building. They use about 2,000 square foot, 2,500 square foot of the building in the front of the property. Uh, it is anticipated based on this current proposal. Uh, America most likely uh, more probably will not be in the building because uh, we are changing the use of the building uh, more of a more of a recreation center than a, uh, a social service building kind of thing. Uh, in any event, uh, America is uh, aware of this. In fact, recently the count we uh, we went for land use and renewed it, their lease for short term. We anticipated they'd be looking for a new location, and they 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 are generally speaking agreeable to that. And uh, um, so that's that. Um, what we're looking at uh, the, for the last what, about four or five years, we've been working uh, pre-COVID. We've been working at YMCA for a uh, rent of an RP for for a community um, cent, not really a community cent, at, at a uh, public service kind of center kind of thing with YMCA for our community services. Um, we went, we issued RP and the YMCA was the only only group that present uh, provided the city with a proposal. Um, from then on, we'll be working with them, um, and we got to the point that we have like a day of transfer of the property to them. Uh, Darren, Darren from the law offices has uh, worked out the long negotiation, working with Y to come up with some uh, lease uh, development slash lease terms for, for the Y taking over the building and do a full construction and operation for like 20 years or something. I forgot how many years we were looking at. Um, but with COVID, everything slowed down somewhat. And then uh, by the time they go through a hill hold development and estimating construction design and construction phase, uh, the project was more than what they anticipated or all, both all of us anticipated. So the relationship didn't work out. And generally speaking, um, they no longer participate in the development side. Uh, however, um, there was some recent conversation with why uh, because part of uh, they have received federal dollars for this project, and but then they are the recipient of money, so they are they may there will be probability that we will have a relationship with them from uh, from us in order to get some of that federal money as as part of the contribution to this project, and I think they will be uh, they may they will most likely play a role in the operating side in terms of uh, some programming side. So that still had to be worked out and, and communicated with, and uh, we are starting a conversation with them again. Uh, but beside that, I think uh, what we would like to ask is uh, Robert, uh, Robert Stahl from uh, Recreation Parks, uh, the director, uh, to go through the presentation in terms of what we're going to use the building for, what, what recreation and parks department intend to use the building for, and what, what kind of program they're going to run. So with that, um, Mike, can you put up the presentation so that um, uh, everybody can see what the uh, the uh, the business plan is, generally speaking. Thank you, Robert. If you could, please. Robert, can you hear me? Okay. I'm, I was on mute. Sorry about that. <laughs> I was asking if anybody hear me and I was on mute. So um, if you can't hear me, let me know because uh, sometimes this computer goes in and out. Um, at, at some point during after the um, um, kind of the, um, the why walking away, um, Leisha um, King and uh, the mayor uh, asked me if I could come up with a, a program um, for the center that made sense. At that time, we were dealing um, with uh, Stanford Boys and Girls Club, and um, we were going to do some kind of partnership. Um, they they were um, slated to raise some capital funds. It came to a point uh, when uh, we really um, evaluated everything. It was almost impossible for them with their facility in Stanford to, um, to manage the operations of, of, of this uh, community center. 
Um, and so we came to a conclusion after many meetings that you know the city was probably in the best position to sustain the operation at this site. And so I, I be, began to put together a with my staff um, uh, a, a program based upon a real recreation and community center. What what the Y was offering, I think, at the at the at the end of their um, um, with with all the revisions, what they were really offering was really a, a community service center. <laughs> What we proposed is really a, a community, uh, a recreation community center, a, a core um, service of any uh, parks and recreation as part of that. So um, I'm going to go through the program with you. I'm not going to go through all the statistics. So if, um, um, Mike, if you can take us down to where the recreation and parks community center proposal, I forget what slide it is. Um, let's keep going and I'll tell you when to stop. <laughs> okay, you can stop. You can go back down. This one slide. What, what we had to do before um, before we were working with um, the Stanford Boys Club, one of the one of the things that we wanted to do is go back over uh, the demographics and the need for this service in South Norwalk, and also the need for it in the city as a whole. And so what what we just went through was just some demographics about um, where the low income. Um, uh, uh, level was and who was being served and who wasn't being served, and um, the, the 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 gist of it was that um, we still had quite a bit, even with um, some of the community services uh, centers that are serving youth. There still was quite a bit of of uh, youth still not being served. I think um, um, one of the uh, agencies that is uh, vital in this um, youth area. Um, they were serving about 2,500 uh, um, youth. Um, and I think that's Carver Center. They were serving about 25 to 3,000 youth. Um, and we estimated we had somewhere between um, you know, 12 and 13,000 youth. Um, so there was a lot of youth still not being served. Um, the schools, uh, of course, have a after-school program that services uh, quite a bit. Of, of the youth as well, but but it's but it's a middle school um, youth, and um, so that leads to high schools um, uh, without uh, after school activities. So we looked at um, our primary uh, audience, and and there were boys and girls from eight to sixteen years of age. Our secondary audience was South Norwalk families and youth, um, seventeen, eighteen, also seniors and adult, and we, we developed some, some, um, some family hours in the morning from 9.30 to 2 p.m. would be family hours. And in, in, in traditional community centers, you have um, mothers and their, and their young that are preschoolers coming in to do activities in the gym, play, play gym, um, uh, single adults coming in and, and taking advantage of, of some of the other services. And our, our weekend uh, weekday hours as planned would be going to be from 9 30 to 8 30, except Fridays and Saturdays and Sundays. So you can go to the next slide. So so Monday through Thursday, uh, 2 30 to 8 30, we have classes, programs, ceramics, art rooms, music studio, computer lab, fitness, weight rooms, exercise equipment, esports, gaming, video game room. And kitchen uh, uh, cooking uh, classes as well in a movie room. So basically, um, what what would what would occur would be the morning hours from as I explained before from nine thirty to two uh, would be um, mostly families uh, that would come in uh, and adults. And also, um, we'll see later on there is some community space as well. Um, some of the specialty classes in the afternoon. Afternoon, after school program would go from 3.30 to 
to approximately six. And then um, after that, we would, uh, during that time, there would be some specialty classes that people could take music, instruments, uh, recording studio, uh, arts and crafts, um, also the computer lab, uh, esports. There'd be many things for them to um, sign up for. We would have the open gym um, after that, um, during that time, from uh, boys, boys and girls, half court. Um, uh, and the boys and girls would, would of course, share uh, uh, the basketball, uh, the, the gym, uh, based upon time. And then uh, at 6.30, um, we would have, uh, you know, it, it would, the gym would be open, but all the other uh, specialty classes and ceramic and art. And we would have um, um, instructors doing some of the specialty classes. Let's go to the next slide. Fridays and Saturdays would be a little different. 10, 10 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. would be for families and adults and new adult ceramics, computer lab, fitness, weight room, exercise room, a yoga, and Pilates. All these classes would be offered uh, through the week. And then uh, after hours, um, you know, there, there would be after afternoon hours would be from 2.30 to 6.30. Um, same offerings, basically. And then, of course, we have our specialty classes as well, as you can see there. Uh, based on timing. Next slide. On Friday and Saturday, our plan is, and it may not happen right away because of, of uh, you, know, you have to grow the program and the tour to program before and you go to the next step. But uh, we're, we're, we want to eventually offer a late night program for ninth to 12th grade. Uh, from 7 to 11. And, and they would uh, have the same kinds of offerings um, uh, through um, uh, from 7 to 11. Also, it's our intent to also have um, uh, other activities outside of the, um, the building, um, uh, other activities, um, uh, taking them to um, some enhancement, enrichment, uh, uh, activities on Friday and Saturday. We haven't determined what that is, but you know it could be anywhere from um, snowboarding to skiing or whatever. Uh, but um, these are some of the things that our community center does. Next slide. <clears throat> this would be our staffing. And um, it doesn't really take a lot of staff to run a community center. I, mean, I was a director of recreation for a time in, in Seattle, we have where we have 38 community centers um, and uh, uh, two uh, tennis centers. Uh, to, uh, it really doesn't take a lot. Usually, um, you know, you have uh, overlap, overlapping shifts. Usually, it takes a recreation attendant that, that kind of is the, the person at the at the main desk when people uh, walk in. They give information. They they do scheduling. Um, they do reservations, they give out information to the public. Um, and then you have an assistant uh, coordinator or assistant um, uh, center uh, manager um, that works alongside that in the morning uh, uh, or the next same number of hours. Then you have some overlap uh, from 1 to 9 p.m. Uh, that you, your recreation leader comes in. That's the person that really plans the recreation classes and hires the instructors. And then you have a uh, second record, rec, rec, rec leader, of course. And, and then the other uh, uh, party that, that is a part of this is a, a community center coordinator. So, and, and so every day we, you, you lay out a schedule um, and there's some rotation um, because people don't always want to work on the kids. So there's some rotation, but this is um, a model or an example of a staffing pattern. You can go up. Next slide. Yeah, besides um, <clears throat> besides um, the the, um, the recreation opportunities that are there and available for uh, our youth, um, we also um, will have some ancillary services. We we have two community spaces uh, that we um, 
um, conceptually um, set aside, one 2,000 square feet, another one about 1,500 square feet. And um, this would be community rooms in the daytime for you know retreats or uh, 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 businesses or nonprofits can rent for meetings. Um, also on a weekends, particularly Sunday when community centers are, are usually closed on Sunday. Um, and used for really community rentals. And so th these two community rooms would service, uh, this is a conceptual um, slide of some of the things that, that, that could happen there, graduation parties, church rentals, corporate meetings, um, you know, weddings even, and then community services, memorial celebrations, staff retreats, meetings, uh, et cetera. So th this, this would be space that the community could rent that would be available. Next slide. So this is uh, a performa um, uh, of, of the operating cost uh, to run the center. And a lot of it is, um, is um, startup um, because equipment, furnishings, you know, um, you can see a lot of it is startup, um, one time uh, kind of cost, and then there's other ongoing uh, maintenance costs. Um, Community center coordinator, we have an existed, existing budgeted vacant position that we have not filled. Um, so, and then uh, the assistant coordinator, we have another uh, uh, recreation supervisor we just hired. So that, that that's another existing position. And then we have, uh, we always keep a, a cadre of uh, intermittent staff um, that, that really are, are necessary because of the fluctuation in hours. Um, some of the other staff we would uh, pick up as we mature the program. Next slide. Again, here are some of the revenue projections from birthday, weddings, reception, graduation party, church rentals, corporate meetings, uh, aerobic uh, yoga classes, uh, dance classes, summer camps. Um, so this is some of the uh, revenue that we would that we would um, uh, uh, take a tip to generate. I, I kind of, um, I took this, I took kind of the smallest um, community center in Seattle, basically to look at very conservatively revenue projections. Uh, operating uh, expenses are probably, um, are, are equal to uh, the size of um, uh, the community centers that we had, that I've had there in Seattle. So um, this, this square footage of this facility, about 22, 21, 22,000 square feet with the gym, it would, of course, expand. And so um, I, I, I used some of the more conservative, I didn't use the really outstanding performing community centers to come up with these projections. Uh, I was very conservative. So um, <clears throat> yeah, so th this is, um, I think this is the last slide. Next slide. Um, well, go back down, go back down, go back down. A little bit right there. Right? No, 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 no. <laughs> so if you can look at this um, floor plan, <clears throat> um, you can see that um, here's the, the entry entryway is uh, South Main is closest to the, over here. South Main. Um, that, that's not the entry over. I think it's over here. So, so many to the right. Yeah. Right, right, there. right there. That's me. So, here's the entryway. And as you know, you come into the entryway to your, to your right would be our office space. Um, to, to the left, there would be um, some additional space that we probably think the Y is probably going to be using. Um, then here's a community space here uh, where uh, the hand is. And then if you go over to the next one, right to, to the other side, it's another community space. So that's 2000, this is approximately, the first one was approximately 15. If you go up, um, go across the hall there, um, over here, right there, uh, to your, to further over here, you see uh, there's a, a weight room and that would be our exercise weight room. And then next to that, next to that is uh, kind of a movie lounge, kind of a television lounge, a uh, place where people will come in 
and be able to sit next to the office. And as we go to the, uh, you can walk over at, to um, the gym. The gym, there's a breezeway over to uh, where the gym is, is going to be sited. And, and then the second floor, <clears throat> second floor, you have a, a community, another community space, uh, which is large. And then you have, um, I can't quite read that next one. Uh, I think it's the kitchen. Um, you know, where we're going to do some um, um, some uh, cooking training, and then next to that, I can't see, I can't remember that. It may come in clearer on my screen. It's, I think it's a storage room. It is storage. It is storage. And then, um, and then this, there's a computer lab. Then you have your esports. Um, room, and then you have your um, your music and and you have your music and um, recording studio, and then over way over the other side, way over at the end, you have our our arts and crafts uh, center as well. So, <clears throat> and then we have a few offices uh, that are um, for the staff that will be observing in some of the instructors. And um, that's really the gist of, of this. Um, there's programming space. And, and as I stated, took a lot of the measurements um, per, um, based upon um, uh, 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 equivalent size community centers. Um, so um, and I work with my, my recreation staff and recreation superintendent who had a lot of experience in recreation, Sandy uh, Corvatus. So, um, and then Ken also worked with us to, uh, to you know, in a practical sense, to give us history. So um, we think this is a good proposal. Um, I know the Y is um, has come back to say basically they want to be Im more involved. Um, I don't know. I don't quite know where Stanford Boys and Girls Club is right now. I think uh, their previous um, executive director is the one that was. Um, engaged in this and she has quit and left. So, um, but I do know the Y wants to be involved and so we may have to carve out some space for them, but their program will be different. It will be more, um, I think, health and wellness uh, program. So that'll mix very well with, um, with uh, the recreation um, balance. So that's, that's the proposal. Uh, I think maybe I take it from here a little bit before okay. I guess we 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 uh, we, we, take we, we take, take take questions and stuff like that. Uh, as you can tell from the plan before, the gym is actually a totally new totally new area. But that portion of the build, the existing building, generally speaking, take up the entire entire property. So for for a recreation center, a gym is essential to that function. So the proposal to build a gym in the back of the building with a little breezeway that connects to it. Uh, that would be on the on the on the uh, Ryan Park uh, area of the property. Uh, we are, we do recognize that there is a um, environmental concern a portion of these ground because they capped the ground, but there's still some uh, uh, what we what they consider urban fill below it. Um, so we we development agency with their help, uh, we uh, we development agency has submitted a funding request to. Uh, I believe it's D, uh, DECD for brownfield money uh, to help to support this project separately. Uh, the cost of any kind of remediation or removal of soil, contaminated soil or, or, or urban fill, whatever it's determined to be, uh, it's not in the cost estimate yet. Uh, so when we request the money, that's additional uh, money that potentially will cover the, those costs. Um, and I just want to note, uh, if you go to the next page, so if you can see on the left-hand side is the existing building and the gym is the ex extension to the back of it. So, so far we haven't, the city have not spent any money in design or, or cost estimating services. Uh, the plan's been developed by, by some volunteer services provided by a contractor. And also the cost estimate is, uh, is provided by um, Newfield Construction who does all our school projects as a courtesy kind of thing. So does the design, at this point, I wouldn't really consider it's really a conceptual design. I mean, as you can see, 
uh, we just kind of place the building and the gym into the existing part. So there will be a reconfiguration, the parking area and stuff. So there is more, a lot more that need to be done in order to de fully develop the course for this project. But um, but the following page, you can go to the next page. Uh, this is the estimate. You can rotate it if you could, uh, Mike. Without going through the detail, I mean, you have, it's in the package, so you can, if you're interested, you can take time to look at it. Bottom line is that we include a contingency amount and design uh, uh, design contingency, construction to the only contingency, uh, excluding any soil remediation kind of thing. Um, at this point, we come up with about $10.5 million. It's 10.1, right? Something like that. I can't remember. But I just I just write up at 10.5. So I think that um and Mike, can you do me another favor? Can you go back to the beginning of my memo? From a budget perspective, I just want to go through everybody a little bit here. Go all the way back. It's the second page of my memo. Right there it goes. Can you go, go no go 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 to the second page? There it goes, right there. Um, so we estimate this project at this point is 10.5. Uh, I believe most of it will go up, uh, go up a little more. Uh, right now, in terms of funding available, we have the $1.2 million from the GGP fund, which is from the mall project. Uh, State had uh, approved a $1.2 million for this uh, for 90 South Main Street. Uh, recently, uh, the, the city through a common council approved the 5.374 from opera funding. Um, and the Fed has given $2 million to the Y for this project. So recent conversation with the Y, I think it was last week, um, we are looking to be getting, uh, we are in negotiating with, negotiation with them that we should be getting $1.75 million uh, out of the $2 million to be contributed to this project. So generally speaking, we are still short about a million dollars, but is something that we will continue to look at and, and, and complete this uh, funding package as we develop designs and, and cost new, uh, uh, more more detailed cost estimates. So as you can see, I, I mean, uh, all of these fundings are not city capital funding yet. So we will be potentially, we'll be looking for the city side to, uh, at this point, probably a minimum a million dollar more to contribute to this project. But overall, these funding come from the state, federal monies and, and, and private funding so far. Um, so that is strategy. Again, the, uh, this is probably like, you know, again, we probably 90% of the fu uh, funding package is not all there yet. Um, so that's in terms of, and at the end, I'm sorry for, Mike, can you jump back to where we were before? I'd also developed a schedule, um, which is the page after the uh, cost estimate. There it goes. So you can look into it, uh, look at it in detail. Uh, we, are, we are at the beginning of this project, so there's a lot more to be done. Uh, I think the next next critical task for the staff is actually because the multiple funding source, we really need to go to all the funding agency to make sure that all the requirements are, are, are we are well versed in all the requirements so that we can start the the, the process of um, uh, RFP for architects and construction manager. So. Again, the next step is really is, is figure out there's many requirements from state and federal requirements that we need to address and make sure that when we go for our them the process and the requirements are incorporated into all of those uh, 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 RP uh, uh, documents. So with that, I think that's all I have. So if you have any question, please. Um, oh, yep, we've got a few questions. Um, could we just go to the close the um, presentation now so I can see the screen? Great, thank you so much. Um, Ms. McMurr. Thank you. Um, I'm really excited that we're doing this. Um, I appreciate all of the thoroughness that's been put into it thus far. I'm sure you guys did this kind of quickly, um, but it seems like um, time was not an issue. Um, Mr. Stowers, how do you, I have a couple of questions. Um, how do you foresee, and maybe it's too early, the why being involved in this project given sort of what has transpired since they're not taking over the property like we originally thought, so to speak? Um, <clears throat> they they have actually um, 
presented some uh, proposals of how they would want to be involved. How I, how I see it is, first, I think we have to um, really um, put any interest in the Stanford Boys Club to be in. We got we have to do that. We have to, and I think and I think um, it's it 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 is in bed. I think we just got to confirm that they're not involved anymore. Um, the other, but but the the uh, why is interested in health and wellness programs. Um, so I think in that we can collaborate with them. Uh, on the health and well, well, wellness program. They have the funds that were supposed to come directly to the center. This is their proposal to get involved, to say that they are putting the money into the center, but they want to be involved in doing that. And so I think we can um, um, get together with them and we can uh, come up with a, um, you know, a, a, of a, um, portion of services to the public that they can provide. They also want to put, um, besides some money to construction, another, I think part of it is about $275,000 into um, programs and services. And, and, and what I would like them to do is use that to help us um, actually build out the place with equipment and supplies and that kind of thing. So uh, furnishings. And so I think, you know, um, we will, I mean, community centers usually, uh, or recreation centers usually have partnerships. They usually have partners just like, you know, parks have advisory councils or friends of or whatever. So I think contractually we'll put together MOU um, that, um, that uh, outlines uh, the services they're, they're going to be, be providing in the hours. And, and the audiences they're going to be um, targeting. And I, I, I think the first one I seen, I thought, oh, come, come on now. That's, I didn't really, you know, but I, I'm, I'm a person that always looks back and looks at possibilities. And so I looked at their proposal and I think we can, I think we can meet it. They want, um, um, they're talking about 2000 square feet of space for their, you know, for their portion. I think we, we may not give them 2,000, but I've, I've looked at with my uh, uh, recreation supervisor, and we may change the flooring around where they meet it. We can probably give them 1,600 square feet. So so I think we can work it out. I think we can work it out. I love the idea of partnership, and I know that a priority of yours, and I'm so grateful for this, is to really look at the needs of our community and prioritize that. And so mm -hmm. I think partnership is wonderful. I just want to make sure that they are committed since we've seen them sort of pull back in the past, that this is a community that we really need, not just one community center. You and I have talked about multiple community centers right. in the future right. with right. a pool potentially. I know that can't happen here. Mm -hmm. um, the only other question I had um, right now, because I want to yield the floor to our, my colleagues, is um, I, I know there is um, room for parking, but can you elaborate at all yet on how many parking spaces there will be available since the addition of the gym is happening? Well, we we, we uh, met with the zoning commission um, on this, uh, the zoning uh, office on this, um, because there are certain requirements for parking, and so what we're going to be doing is um, uh, we're going to be talking to. There's two churches that have parking lots that basically they don't use except for on Sundays, um, and, and of course Bible class study through the week. Um, we we we. We believe that we can negotiate an agreement with um, one or, or more of those churches, and um, um, so that's what we uh, we talked to, uh, to the mayor about that, uh, and the mayor wants to be involved in those talks. Great, thank you. Um, but before we go to um, Ms. Ayers, um, can we, um, Mike? Could you please move Diana Revolus over as um, as a panelist? She is in the waiting room or on as a participant. And I'm gonna go ahead, Ms. Ayers. Thank you. Um, my question is more surrounding about the outside of the building. Um, with the increase of the gym, which I think is wonderful, um, that really does take um, 
some space from the green space that is there, which I, I also think we need a green space. But has there has has there been any conversations on what a, what's the outside of the building is going to look like? How is that going? I know you said a breezeway, you said the extra building in the back, but has there been any thought or really around the outside of the building and what that will entail? I'll let Alan answer that. We, we were very concerned with the outside look. And yeah. Um, ideas. Since the beginning of this project, even with the YMCA, it always been the desire on the city side to change the aesthetic of the front of the building. Uh, in order to, so we are looking to substantial improvement on the front facade. The side and the back facade, most likely will, won't have, nothing much will happen to them. It's, uh, it's probably stayed away is on the side, the two side, which is the driveway and the other side neighbor. And the back side is really against the, the new gym that we will put in. So it's not very visible on the other side. But we do intend to do major improvement in the front to change the look of the building because uh, the building as a stand is not um, something that the, the, that we, uh, we we would like to continue to see in the future. So yes, I think we're looking somewhere between five hundred to seven hundred thousand dollars aside to to do the front. Um, may I just say that the back of the building is just as important as the front of the building because currently that property is surrounded by apartment buildings that people can look out of their window. So I, I I know you guys are good at what you do, but I would really hope that you would pay some attention to what the back of that building is going to be and not just a box that you put in a piece of grass. Um, but that is also aesthetically pleasing for those people who have to look out of their windows. Um, my second question is more on the programmatic side. Um, I guess that would go back to you, Mr. Stowers. Um, I hear as you continue to talk your ease or how comfortable you are um, with the YMCA. And I know that partnership is important for us to bring these services um, to the city, but I have to say that I am not as comfortable due to the track record of the YMCA and, and what we had to go through with this project in the YMCA. Um, I know you said something about the Boys and Girls Club. What if what is the contingency plan if the YMCA or and or the Boys and Girls Club is unable to partner with us? Will the city still be able to carry out this project without that partnership? Yes, we will. Um, you know, we didn't expect the Y to even, I mean, we weren't even considering the Y in our programming plans at all. And we we thought they would hand the money over to us and, you know, and, and you know, go go away. But um, they're not doing that. <laughs> so um, they want to, in their own way, follow the intent of, of, of the funding that comes, that was supposed to be originally for 98 May. And so this is their way of, of, of trying to meet um, the intent of the of the funds. Um, I think we, we negotiated an MOU with them. Um, and, and, and we haven't really worked out what they'll be doing. I'm just, what, what I am um, kind of estimating is what they've talked about. But we really have to sit down and meet with them and try and determine uh, their program. As far as uh, the Stanford uh, Boys Club, they they were kind of easing back initially. Anyway, they, they eased back on the capital uh, side, and but they had a really effective after school program that we thought we could still use, and so that's the part that we need to e either put to bed or figure out a way to for them to fund it. Um, so, but. In any case, uh, my staff has experience in all those things. Um, and I, I think with the growth of our revenues, we're gonna be able to hire other folks and instructors. So um, no, we don't, we don't have, I mean, if they pulled out, we'd be fine. We'd be fine. I mean, we, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna need more resources and I'm working on things to do that. You know, I'm working on, I've, I've got a revenue study out right now. It's gonna give us the real, of uh, uh, fees and charges that we should be charging. Um, you know, in the master plan, you'll see um, in the briefing that we give you that that uh, 
Norwalk, Norwalk residents were more in favor of increasing fees and charges than taxes. So we 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 want to see where that that level is. Uh, also, the revenue from um, co the community space will help us as well continue to um, to bring in staff. We're going to put off the late night until we get team leaders because um, we have to have uh, you know experienced team leaders to run those programs. So. It's it's a building, um, kind of to 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 maximize the uh, the the use of the building, um, but that's how these things are started. But no, in in answer to your, in the long way, uh, we 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 could go ahead without the without without but, but you know it's we could also survive with the partnership as well. So either way, I think we'll be okay. Um, I, I, I just want to add, you know, I really appreciate that you included those revenue projections um, and really thought them out so, so in such detail. Um, and, and, you know, it's really very forward thinking and uh, just wanted to point that out. Uh, Mr. Burnett. Uh, thank you, Chair uh, Person Smith. Um, I, this is a great project. I think it's transformative to the community and, and will be a great resource to the overall city. Um, my question is around what, if any, obstacles do you um, foresee that might impede the progress of this project? I'm thinking. Of course, if, uh, if, if the expenses, through, if the construction expenses go beyond um, what? You know what we've envisioned, but I think I think we've had really solid numbers. We've had a couple of estimates, so I think that's going to be okay. I think that in in terms of sustaining the operations, is sustained just like any other governmental entity is, and that is you provide the resources you can provide at that time, but you always have a a plan for reduction uh, in staff for reduction in programs. I, I don't I don't for it see that happening, but um, sometimes in order to sustain a, a, um, an operation, you have, to, you have to be practical in terms of, uh, you know, your revenues and expenses, how they come in, how they go, and your resources staffing. But like, like I said, these community centers don't need a lot of staff. And many times, uh, in, in some of the larger community centers, I've seen um, as low as three staff there. Um, and we already have maintenance doing taking care of the building already, uh, which will increase some of our utility costs. Um, they, uh, I think the why we're talking about um, paying their pro rata share of utility costs and uh, cost as well. So um, I, I, I like that, like I said, you know, um, it, you, you treat it like any other governmental uh, entity. You, you don't want. In order to sustain it, you have to go with the ebb and flows. Um, I think the, the, the importance is to, uh, uh, to fund services that uh, it really need. So uh, I think the council also will have a responsibility in terms of that. that uh, what we have to realize, and the master plan will point this out, is that we have Plenty of outdoor spaces, plenty of outdoor recreation. We have beautiful parks, we have beautiful coastlines. But when the winter and the cold um, time comes, you don't have any facilities for any. And so we, and I think it's a responsibility of the city to not rely heavily, so heavily on third parties to provide recreation um, uh, amenities to, to the public. It's really our responsibility. Um, um, third parties are often great and supplemented, but they shouldn't have the total responsibility. So I, I, we'll move with the admin flows, but I, I think we can. I think I think we have the resources and we have the staff experience to to make this work. Um, thank you. Are you all set, Mr. Burnett? Um, I, you know, I. I envision the staffing will be worked out and that will come once the building is actually there. My question was more around 
putting the building, the footprint on the building in place, um, the the actual construction of the building, you know, uh, is there any issues with the land, the neighbors, et cetera, et cetera? I, I'm just brainstorming here, but uh, just trying to understand if there's anything that the committee, the council needs to focus on to overcome any obstacles to make this a reality. I, I think, um, as I mentioned before, I think there are many challenges, many challenges for this project. So I think, first of all, it's really the funding source because of the multiple type of funding, uh, each one that comes with its own set of rules and requirements and stuff. So that's one thing I asked Joanne to do as soon as uh, after this meeting, assuming everybody's supportive of it. Uh, this, the next thing we really do is to get into those funding sources and make sure that all the requirements are, are, are achievable kind of thing. They are, but at the same time, we need to incorporate all of them in everything we do. So that's my first issue, my first concern, not issues. Um, the second one is that, um, as, you, as I said before, we got most of the funding in place, but right now looking at a $10.5 million, we're still short about a million dollars. So it is a very challenging piece of this. And also, again, uh, we are actually requesting money for, for re potential remediation costs as, as a separate funding, uh, which has not been included as part of this project yet. So we are anticipating that there are some environmental issues that we need to address. And again, we are approaching the, the, the state for funding. So depending whether we get money or not, that's another potential obstacle. If they do, then we are, we are just being covered because we took a very uh, conservative approach in terms of estimating the how, how much material and potential would be less less than that quantity that need to be removed from site. So we are considering that. Um, as you can look at the plan, we haven't relayed out the uh, parking spaces and stuff like that. So I think the next phase of it, when we go off, go off for RP and high and architects start look, looking at the preliminary design and stuff like that, I think those those the, that's when we really get into the details of it to see how close are we with the ten point five million dollars of the total project. Um, I don't anticipate. I mean, everything we know right now, we got we got estimate that include owner contingency, CM contingency, escalation costs, uh, and then also design contingency. So I mean, that's a normal process of estimating. But at the same time, it's, that it's based on a drawing that's really abstract that we haven't really developed. We just like, you know, okay, we're gonna put a gym in the back of the building. Um, that's basically it with a little bit of site work kind of thing associated with it. So those are our challenges. It's really, it's a uh, it's next phase. Uh, we will get into, get a little bit more into design, come up with the initial design that actually lays out the building properly and things like that. Uh, that's when we get some real numbers. Uh, again, I'm, I'm not saying that the number we have is terrible. I mean, it, it is a, it is a professional estimate based on the drawings that we have. So, I I mean, I think I think I think the twelve ten point five million dollar. It's a uh, generally speaking, is the parameter we're working from. But uh, we we need to confirm that for the next phase. I think also um, um, we were really worried about any deed restrictions that might stop us from uh, grants that we have gotten in the past that may stop. Um, this this uh, project and Darren Callahan, he might he's I think Darren on he may speak to this. We talked to uh, the uh, Department of Economic Development um, a couple of days ago, um, uh, and uh, Darren kind of led the conversation. Are you are you on Darren? Yeah, maybe yes, Darren can tell us. Yeah, uh, about that. <clears throat> yeah. Um, we had a nice conversation um, with the state. Uh, regarding our prior commitments to that um, parcel, uh, the, the parcel we're talking about, um, and the, particularly um, the standard uh, deed restrictions they require to be placed as no. far as receiving um, funding. And um, we feel reasonably confident that um, those aren't going to be hurdles. Um, they're going to do a little due diligence, look into the prior loan agreement, and the financial assistance agreement, but um, it doesn't appear, appear to be an issue at all. Yeah, they they actually said they were they're willing to to work out anything with us, and that um, uh, they just they thought that um, there was no problem. Uh, but they they still have to do their their due diligence, as Darren said. But they were really excited about the project and wanted to help in any way they could. So that that would be one of the things we initially uh, thought, Greg, that might stop us with the deed restrictions. Um, and as Alan says, you know, finance and of course, the estimates, 
There's also, a, a, you know, I think, I don't know if it's still present, but some of the things we need to look at around the building is security. Um, I understand that there was, and I don't know if it's still there, a halfway house uh, that was in the area. I think we need to uh, do our due diligence to see, um, you know, uh, what that's all about and how we can mitigate that. Yeah, we're, we're trying to, I mean, the first thing we did was try to, list all the uh, uh, probable impediments and we start going to work on them right away even working with um the um you know um, the ecd um, redevelopment association to put in for a brownfield grant for the mitigation of the um uh, soil that we might have to remove at the site so um we yeah we we tried to outline all the impediments and try, try to remove them uh, as best we can before we actually start spending money. Great, thank you, I appreciate it. Um, thank you, Mr. Stowers. Uh, Mr. Meek. Uh, thank you. Can we get an asset schedule of the existing building? How much money has been put in there over the years? Um, what's left to depreciate, et cetera? Um, that should be in Munis. Uh, I would like to see that. Thanks. Okay. So, you know, we put millions and millions of dollars into this existing building and, and now we're going to put another 10 million. We still don't have a pool. You know, the Westport Y has a pool for 36 million. I know that's a lot. We're not even getting a pool. On top of the five tens of millions we put into this thing over the years. Thanks. Um, are there any other questions, thoughts, comments? Well, God, I had one. I oh. had one, Barbara, and it just Go ahead. Go ahead. Who has a question? Go ahead. I think we're good. If if it comes to you, just shout it out, um, Darlene. I'll just make a you know a couple comments here. Uh, as, as we're winding down, but, you know, I, I, I very much appreciate all the work that has gone into this, you know, we're, we are so in the infancy stage, if you think about it, right, there's a, a, a lot of work to do, a lot of questions about funding, um, the, the brownstone site, or brownfield site, rather, you know, it's, um, there's a lot going on, but, um, but I, I really appreciate all of the detail and the forward thinking um, that that has gone on so far. Um, Darlene, did you think about did it come to you? It, it'll come to me after we get off this meeting. But, <laughs> but a couple of folks. But that's have, okay. Have, have you know who to call. call. I know who to call. But know who to call. call. A couple of council members have asked the question. The parking is has has always been a problem and will continue to be a problem no matter what we do. And I think security is going to be something that's going to be key um, because we can build it, but it has to feel safe too. And and that's something as a community we have to take um, take uh, part in. Um, making sure that this asset remains a, a, a useful asset for everybody in the city. Because one of the things that, that I've often said is that, you know, yes, this is a community center in South Norwalk, and we know what that always means. You're talking about folks who are making less than and, you know, trying to provide social services, but we want this to be an amenity that is similar and on par with other communities because everybody deserves the same types of, of services. And so that's the goal and we want people to, to feel safe. You know, I, I, I think Mr. Meeks, that's an old building. And so we, we have put a lot of resources into that, but I don't think that that negates anything that we're trying to do here. Um, that money is that money. We put money in a lots of projects that we've had to totally tear down and redo and reimagine. So we are reimagining this space here for the community. I don't disagree with you. I just think we should imagine larger. Yeah. I, I wish we could. <laughs> um, um, and maybe we can someday, some other space. Um, but this is, this is it, it sounds good. I hope there's, there's going to be some flexibility on what we say we can do because as the community changes, the needs are going to change and we need to be able to respond to them um, in a meaningful way. Um, and the question still has not come back to my mind. And again, it will come as I hit the leave meeting. <laughs> well, you're, you're not leaving, remember, right? Okay. Don't you right. stay with me? Right. Yeah. There's okay. a couple of things. Okay. I'm sorry, of... uh, Robert, what were you saying? 
there's a couple of things I like to mention. One is sure. the mayor um, and the um, uh, chief of staff have the same concerns about, hey, if we're going to put something that's on the wall, it's going to be as good as putting it anywhere else, it's high quality facility. Um, and um, so we're taking that, 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 that uh, you know, it, it, as part of our pride in the city. I think the other thing that we we have that is vital in running a community center is to have a strong advisory council uh, made up of uh, people in the area um, and and some at large to um, to help guide um, um, the programming and the, and the uh, operations um, 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 of the community. So. Um, so that's that's always been a vital part part in all the community centers that I've um, I've um, had the privilege of, of overseeing that they all had a, a strong advisory councils. So um, that's something that we'll start talking about putting together as as this becomes more of a reality. I remember. <laughs> I remember. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I wrote it down really tiny, and I, my eyes just went to it. So. Um, one of the uh, speakers during the public participation, the one and only, um, Ms. Laura Teller did mention something about solar. So I'm wondering, um, Alan or uh, um, Robert, have, have there been conversations about um, incorporating where where we can and where when we can, and even on the roof, like the green infrastructure, we can do something really amazing um, with this building. So um, has there been any preliminary conversations? Or are we adding that going forward? As, as a requirement by this committee uh, on the city spot, uh, we are we have to look at every building where we do a major renovation project. Uh, there's no if a bus, everything we bring, everything we look at, we're gonna bring it back to the committee. It's like city hall, we looked at it and uh, we have to have uh, our, our consultant team look at it and structure is generally speaking. In the, in the existing building, generally speaking, two two factors: condition of the roof, and as well as the struck building structure. So, since we do a new roof, so the roof roof material is not a problem. So, it's really it's up to the structural engineer to look at the loading capacity of this existing structure to see that we can we can support a, a solar system. With this, there's no reason why we don't want to do it. I mean, um, it's that simple. But um, I mean, and is it cost prohibitive to 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 make us um well structurally it's not structurally the building cannot support the additional load okay. um then it's a problem right i mean uh it only takes about six to ten pounds more per square foot depends on what type of what system we use so um again it's up to the structure when, when we start designing we, that 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 requirement is going to put on the design team and they will look at it and come back to us and say, you know, if this, if this structural modification, chances are it's not cost effective because that cost add to the cost of the solar system. So at some point, you're not getting any financial benefit from the solar. Uh, but you will see those numbers. When those numbers comes in, everything come through, come through my office and go to the committee for decisions. So, I mean, at that point, you can look at it. You can ask, I mean, questions. I don't, I don't have the answers for you because okay. we are, they are, we are, we, I'm told by the council to do this. So I'm doing this, no question about it. And we do ask our consultant to do this. And, and there's no reason why we don't want to do it. It, it. It's the only reason why we don't do it is because either structure or the existing roof is 10 years old. I don't want to put a system on a 10 years roof. Then only 15 years later, we got to take it apart. And at that point, we never put it back because the technology is going to be different. And also the cost of just putting it back, it's not cost effective. And the agreement with the uh, power, part of the power purchase agreement would be 20 years. So it, all of that doesn't make sense. So, but at the same time as we will look at it, absolutely we will look at it. And, and this committee and the common council will have every part of the process to review and approve it. So again, it's not nothing to hide, nothing to, you know, it's just really a technical financial analysis. Thank you. Uh, I just have two two quick things. One is that I, there's no action being uh, proposed on on agenda, so it's really for information. I know that uh, I think last last council council action, uh, the council voted to uh, to approve the aqua money for this project. As part of that, I always intend to bring 
uh, with Robert to bring this project to so they had a full presentation to the, the, the uh, majority portion of the common and for the full common council. I mean, the full council invited to this meeting. Uh, so everybody knows what we're doing. So as we go through the uh, RP process of Octa and so everything kind of falls in line and makes sense when you go for approval process. So it is a, it's, it's a beginning of a, of a project. And again, we have substantial money available for it, but not all of it yet. But at the same time, it's that I will be coming back as we get more information to go for it's probably be a special appropriation process to, to find the remaining portion of the money for this project. Uh, the second is a minor thing. I'm not asking for approval or anything, but we've been calling this project Norwalk Community and Recreation Center. Uh, without any objection, again, we're not adopting anything. I just want to make sure that everybody's com comfortable with that name. So we will continue to use that for now until at such a time we give the project a different name. But I just want everybody to be aware that that's the name we, I'm using again. So, you know, if there's any concern, just email me. Uh, we can change it if there's a wish to change it. But I think it covers what the intent of this building is. It's just not just for South Norway, it's for the whole community. So we call it Norway Community Recreation Center. Um, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Ms. Revolus? Um, so I have a bunch of questions that I'm going to just table for later in the development. The only thing I want to ask for right now that I just, um, and I think really the access to a pool is almost even an equitable scenario here for, like, we should really think about this. But um, is there any thought at all in, in any additional elevation to this building. I just, that's really the one thing I know that's, there's people that are concerned with development and how our skyline is looking. And I'm, I haven't seen it. I just wanna vocalize it for this meeting if there is or isn't any thought of elevating this building. I think it's going to remain two floors. Who's going to answer that? Yeah, I, I just want, I'm pretty sure that's what I'm saying. I just want it to be vocalized that it's going to probably remain that way. It is going to remain that way. Okay. And, and, and you saw the piece where they're going to build the gym on the back, right? Mm -hmm. So that's going to mm -hmm. be the same story. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, I just, exactly. I just, I don't, like I said, I'm reading, see, I'm not seeing that that's a thought. I just wanted to vocalize it's not a thought because I do know that that's, um, concerns of uh, many in our in our district. So I just want to vocalize that's not a concern here. Alan, uh, is that going to be a two story in the back or a one story? It's, it's going to be a gym typical is a one and a half story. So okay. by putting a gym in the back, we're actually going to be putting in two new facades in the back side of the building. So from the park, you will see a new facade for the gym. Uh, so that one, we will, we will design it accordingly. Uh, so the this the front, this two side that we're going to be putting more, a little more money in terms of designing and 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 and, and this, this. so there will be a new front facing the park itself. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, so I think that's it. Uh, unless there's any final questions or comments, um, we could adjourn this part of the meeting. And uh, the land use um, members, please don't go anywhere. Um, so um, I'll call for a motion to adjourn the joint meeting. Motion to adjourn. Okay, Ms. Young makes that motion. All in favor? Okay. Um, and if you would like to leave, you may. And land use members, please stay. And we will um, move on to our roll call for land use. And let me give it just a moment. Okay, so uh, now moving on to the regular meeting of the Land Use and Building Management Committee. Uh, we have with us um, Greg Burnett, Brian Meek, David Huvelman, Heidi Alterman, Nicole Ayers, and myself, Barbara Smith. Um, and now um, if we have anyone who uh, would like to speak under public participation for any items on our regular um, agenda, looks like Ms. Laura Cella is there. So if you could just move her over um, so she can speak on an, whatever item she has for the agenda. Go ahead, Diane. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair, and thank you to this committee for allowing you to see my face. I, I like that. I think we should do that for all of our meetings from this day forward. 
Um, good evening. Uh, this is Diane Loricella uh, again. Um, there are two items on this, um, the Land Use and Building Management Committee meeting. I'd just like to uh, address uh, actually three. Uh, the first item, uh, item 5A, um, I am a former board member of the Lockwood Matthews Mansion and uh, the work that has gone into this by this by the board and the staff has been terrific. However, um, they are here tonight asking for 1.25 million, unless I, I may get it wrong, maybe it's a loan. In that case, that's different. But if it's for an outright grant, we're also having lots of other needs and of expenses. One was just mentioned um, of the, in the South Norwalk, a former neon building, but also we have the issue outstanding still of the Milligan parking lot where we need money. And so I am sorry, I would like to see the council decide whether this important amount of money, a lot of money should go to this project or uh, trying to make sure that we have a functional library for all the people. And um, I'm sorry, I just, I, I love Patsy and Doug, but it doesn't seem to be uh, equitable. Second is um, on item 5C under the Norwalk Land Trust. I was also once on that, that board for 12 years. I left on my own accord to move on to some other projects. I observed the Conservation Commission meeting when this item was presented by Mr. Baskin, who I know is on, uh, on the, uh, the Zoom, and also I very much respect him and like him uh, as a former board member especially. The thing is, I did not feel that the commission or the staff has done their due diligence. They do not have that much money in this account, uh, 400, roughly 425,000. To spend $200,000 on a parcel of land that is actually a fractured um, open space, meaning that the wildlife potential and health is not necessarily going to be uh, the best and highest use of the money, no matter what Mr. Zemba, their consultant, has said, uh, there, there are other, what was supposed to happen with the staff was that there is statutorily in the ordinance, Ms. Cherichetti, Cherichetti is supposed to give this commission, Conservation Commission, an annual update of private and public lands that are under threat for development. And that has not happened. It was not part of the conversation last Tuesday when the commission voted rather quickly and with almost no questions about their statutory authority. I think this money may be better spent on a vest pocket park in either District A or District B instead oh, of- yeah, you're in three minutes. If you could wrap up, please. I'll wrap up, yeah, certainly. I think that it's up to you to make sure we have equitable distribution of this material. And lastly, I just have a question to Mr. Hodell as to whether in looking at the HVAC and item D six and seven, is he utilizing the tools for schools EPA model in order to plan and build new HVAC systems. I don't think he is, and he needs to, in order to comply with this new state authorities that are making, are available for tonight's discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Larcella. Um, is there anyone else who um, is signed up to speak? Okay, seeing none, um, I will close public participation and move on to uh, the minutes of um, the meeting of May 3rd. Um, do I have a motion, please? Mr. Burnett moves the minutes. Are there any changes, additions, or deletions? Okay, seeing none, um, I'll call for a vote. All in favor of the minutes as they are. Opposed? Abstentions? One abstention, Ms. Alterman abstains, and so the minutes pass. And moving on, there is no old business, so moving on to new business. Item A, review request for, addition, for, for amendment to the Lockwood Matthews Mansion Museum's financial assistance agreement, and refer the following to the Council for Action. 
authorized the mayor, Harry W. Reeling, to execute an amendment to the financial assistance agreement with Lockwood Matthews Mansion Museum at Norwalk, Inc. for the infrastructure improvement project at the museum to increase the city's capital grant funds by an additional $1,250,000 for a revised total of $6,750,000, account number to be assigned. Uh, will someone uh, move that item, please? Mr. Huvelman, thank you very much. Um, so these um, these funds were already approved in the capital budget process. Um, I know that you know there were so, there were some um, you know uh, construct construction issues there. Um, so um, we have Patsy Brescia here to to talk about that. Alan, did you have anything to add before I, I turn it over to Patsy? Uh, no, I just want to say that uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's part of the recently approved capital budget for for uh, 2023 24. So the money's been allocated, it becomes available in July 1st. At the same time, in order to, um, for, for us to move the money over, we had to add this money to the uh, amend the agreement to, to add this to that overall relationship. Thank you. Okay, Patsy, go ahead. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, first of all, I just wanna, uh, for the record, say that I'm vice chairman of the Mansion Board. I'm also vice chairman of the Library Board. Uh, uh, which is sort of interesting because we have two of these issues on the, on the agenda for tonight. Uh, this has been uh, a project that's been planned for some 15 years, and uh, I think most of you probably know that, but for the record, uh, we have broken it down through the years and have worked with Alan and every everyone else to get to the point of uh, doing the final mechanical, and I stress the word mechanical, uh, improvements to the to the building. Uh, there is uh, minimal heat currently in the building, uh, mostly just on the first floor, and that's pretty much seasonal. When it is very cold, we have to uh, close the building. Um, there is virtually no electricity uh, in the basement and the second and third floors, and so we have to use flashlights. And uh, of course, um, the mansion has gotten all kinds of publicity and, and acknowledgement and acceptance, uh, both on a local and state and national level um, uh, in the last few years. So it's pretty amazing that the museum as stewards of the city's property, because as you all know, the city of Norwalk owns the building and the mansion has leased it for a uh, dollar a year since uh, 1966 and has been the steward, um, uh, providing the stewardship uh, for the, for the uh, preservation of the, of the building. This particular project uh, has been um, under design and uh, working uh, agreements for the last two years. We have been meeting with the state um, uh, Department of Economic Development and Preservation and um, uh, city officials uh, every Monday uh, for um, for I think it's pretty much two years to get this this project launched. Uh, we are at contract with um, um, uh, and the we are on site. As a matter of fact, Monday this coming Monday morning at ten o'clock, we are having our so-called uh, groundbreaking ceremony, and you all are aware of it. You've been invited, and I really hope you come. It's, uh, it's an amazing um, opportunity for the city of Norwalk to, to move this, this project and to have the mansion uh, become really the economic en engine that it can be. Uh, I think you're all aware that we just recently have had several um, movie and television uh, um, opportunities where, where different companies have come and, and used the building uh, as um, an iconic building in the country. Uh, <clears throat> so um, I don't know if there are any specific um, questions, but what this is going to enable us to do is to have heat, a new heating system, uh, which hasn't been replaced since the 60s, the 1960s, uh, throughout the building, IT, a fire suppression system, which does not exist right now, and um, other uh, very minimal plumbing because we already had uh, added uh, ADA compliant uh, restrooms and an elevator 
uh, I forget, maybe like eight or nine years ago, I, I've been on this project, I think since 2008. So the years sort of merged together. So that is where we are. Uh, we have moved up. Uh, one of the fascinating things is, is that the construction required that we totally physically move out of the building. And if you can imagine moving uh, a 40,000 square foot building of artifacts that have been so-called stored, I'll put that in parentheses, uh, in the basement of this building that are city property of, of building fragments from other structures within the park. And uh, we are stewarding them and have moved them. And the project of moving and packing uh, has been a two-year effort for us just to do that. And I think this morning I finished my last round of um, instructing people to uh, take another truckload out of the out of the building. So um, I'm happy to try to answer any questions if anybody has it. But this additional money is is vitally needed. Uh, and it was not a surprise projection that we needed this amount of money to do this project. We had projected that a couple of years ago, but we hadn't gotten all the funding necessary. Thank you, Patsy. Um, You're welcome. Uh, Mr. Burnett, yeah, Mr. Burnett has a question. Yes, sure. that's Chairperson uh, Smith. Thank you. Um, just, just for my clarity and maybe for others, we, we use the word additional, um, but if I'm clear and maybe someone can provide clarity, we, we have already allocated the $1.2 million in the capital budget. 1.25, yes. Right, 1.25 in the capital budget for 23-24. And, and it's really, when we say additional, we're meaning we're taking that 1.25 and add it to the previous allocation of 5.5. Correct. To, to bring it up to six and change. So six at seven, five, seven fifty. So, so, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, there's got, I know what the exact numbers are. I, I just want to be clear on the wording that we're not authorizing, we're not authorizing money that has not already been allocated. Correct. Is, is that correct? We're, what we're really doing is modifying the previous commitment, but the dollars have already been approved through the capital budget process. Yes, Am maybe Alan can. That is Alan, my understanding. My, yeah. yeah, Alan, do you want to comment on that? Because that's certainly the way I understand it. You're muted, Alan. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, yes, we have uh, the city has previously approved five point five million dollars, and we executed a, a grant agreement with a. Uh, it's a separate thing. One is the legal. Uh, one is the approval of funding, which we done five point five, and then in order for for me to manage the expenditure of the funds. They need to be a, 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 a assistant agreement between the city and Lockwood Matthew Mansion. So we had previously executed an agreement for $5.5 million. So we added with the council approving the $1.25 million this year. I need to, that, uh, we are, what we're doing here is add, we're going to amend the agreement to add this amount to it. Okay, okay thank um, you. Are there any other questions? Mr. Meek. You're You're still still muted. Muted. There you Sorry, go. I'm here. Um, so there's 14.725 million now for the museum. Once Correct. we take in 1.25 million. Right. I think uh, the, the state has authorized $8 million. So eight, eight plus this is 14.75. Right. All right. Thanks. So we just spent 10 million in the last meeting, 15 million here, 25 million. We don't have a pool for the kids. Thanks. Any other questions? Um, yeah, you know, I, I think this is a really important project. Um, 
and has been ongoing for so many years. Um, I think it's really important that we continue to support it, um, you know, with the proper HVAC, with air conditioning and heat, uh, that it will mean the museum will be able to stay open all year round. And uh, certainly there will be a great deal of additional revenue because of that. And I think that that's a really important um, uh, matter to think about. So um, unless there's any other questions, I'll call for a vote. Um, all in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? Mr. Me and uh, Ms. Alterman, Mr. Meek are opposed. It passes four to two. Okay. I thank you all for your support. Thank you, Patsy. Um, okay, moving on to AA, uh, review request for the acquisition of 3 Belden Avenue and refer the following accordingly. 1A, authorize the mayor, Harry W. Reeling, to execute any and all documents necessary to acquire 3 Belden Avenue, Norwalk, Connecticut, in the amount of $1.4 million plus customary due diligence costs, closing costs and adjustments and title insurance costs. Account pending assignment and approval of an account number by the finance department at its June 8, 2023 Finance and Claims Committee, Ray acquisition of 3 Belden Avenue, Norwalk, Connecticut, and 1B, referral Connecticut general statutes 824, referral for a municipal planning commission report on the city's proposed acquisition of 3 Belden Avenue, Norwalk, Connecticut. Uh, would someone like to move that, please? Mr. Huberman moves it. Um, I believe um, we have, um, yeah, uh, Darren and, and Jess, do we have Jess? To, yeah, and yes, and Jess Vonishek are here to discuss this. So whoever wants to go first, um, please do. Great. So um, I'll be going first and Darren can fill in any of the um, gaps that I leave out. But uh, this project has been ongoing discussion for a very long time um, with an opportunity to renovate the library and do a possible expansion at the Belden, um, at the Belden branch. So in 2018, the library board completed a uh, building plan, and they also completed a strategic plan that spanned from 2019 to 2022. And the goal of the strategic plan and the goal of the building plan was to be able to modernize uh, the library to be able to meet the needs of the residents, um, both currently and also um, from a future standpoint, modernizing not only through renovation, but also uh, the possibility of an expansion. At that time, the library board uh, and the city began working closely together through economic community development and also through community and social services to be able to talk with the first taxing district about their property at 3 Belden. And that property is 0 0.53 acres. Um, it currently has our business development center located on it. And through the discussions with the first taxing district, um, we've been able to negotiate um, an agreement to acquire that piece of property for $1.4 million using ARPA funding. So at this particular point in time, you have um, in front of you a motion uh, for the city to purchase approximately 0.5 acres from the first taxing district for $1.4 million through ARPA. Um, if approved, uh, Again, we'll be going to the finance committee tomorrow evening. Um, and we'd be advancing to planning and zoning committee on June the 21st for um, an H 24, and then advancing to common council for approval uh, later in the month on June the 27th. Overarching from the standpoint of where we are right now, if we are to acquire three Belden, we do have an opportunity to not only renovate the existing library and do a potential expansion. And what the library board is proposed to do is to go back and look at the strategic plan and update that strategic plan and also update the building plan in order to be um, able to consider the three Belden property and what the footprint of the library would look like with also realizing that there is pressure on the parking situation. And I think that is a little bit um, of the elephant in the room to a certain extent where we need to really consider a, a permanent solution for additional parking for the library. And Darren, um, feel free to fill in any gaps. Thanks, Jess. Uh, no, I think you covered everything, uh, but if anyone has any questions for me, I'm happy to, to answer them. 
So um, can I just ask, um, will this make parking available immediately upon the purchase? Um, you know, it's just steps away um, from the library from the back door. That's correct. So um, it will be short term solution for additional parking spaces. And then in the long term, um, we'd be looking to, again, renovate the library, um, look at a potential expansion and then understand additional parking opportunity on that site for a long term solution as well. OK. And if I'm not mistaken, there are was it 32 spots? At, at three Belton, 32 parking spots? That sounds correct. I don't know the number exactly right off, um, but I can um, I can research that and bring it back to you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Meek. Uh, thank you. What, was this in addition to the agenda because it was not posted to the city's website? Um, uh, I believe it was posted to the city's website on the land use um, committee page. That's where I found the agenda. It's Amanda yesterday. Um, it's it's not out there. Okay, I'm not opposed to this, but it's it's not on the uh, city's website. Thanks. Yeah, uh, Alan, maybe double check that. But uh, I I know that you know your office is really on top of of this, so I'm surprised that it wasn't updated on the website. But it was certainly updated in paper. Uh, I, I, checked it, I checked it yesterday and today. It was up both Okay. Days. It was okay. I put Darren. it yesterday. Thank you. That's Before confirmed. Time, about 11 yeah. something. Okay. Are there any, any other questions, comments? All right. Well, oh, okay. Mr. Burnett. Yes. I'm, I'm sorry for the late question, Chair. Uh, I, I guess my question is, um, the activity at Three Belden, um, will that continue or do, you know, until the plan, uh, we, we have the business center there, um, will that continue for some period of time or does that come to a close immediately? Um, yeah, so I think, um, so the answer to that is that the, the redevelopment agency is actually currently leasing the first taxing district building that's located at Three Belden Avenue. Their lease is officially up in February 2024. Um, we would continue um, using the space as it stands now in the short term for the Business Development Center. And the way that I would like to proceed um, with discussion with the library board is to be able to actually incorporate the Business Development Center as a library amenity, a space in the library that supports that in some meaningful way. Um, from initial conversations, I think that is something that the board um, seems to be positive about, but we do need to get into more detailed discussion about how that would be incorporated, if it would be incorporated, and what that would look like. Um, but again, that I think will be addressed through the strategic plan and the updated building plan. Um, and I should comment that um, Alan Lowe will be taking on the responsibility of developing the RFP with the library board um, for that strategic plan and the building plan. Um, but more so than that, he'll actually be responsible for the RFP for bringing on architectural services, uh, which his department will then lead through the process, much like he's doing um, with uh, the 98 South Main project and also the school project. Are there any other? Okay, uh, go ahead, Mr. Meek. Uh, sorry, quickly, I just had to correct myself. I had to refresh my browser. I see it. It is up there. Great. <laughs> Good. Uh, thanks for thanks for adding that. Okay. Any more comments? Questions? Okay. I, I you know, as uh, just uh, said at first, this has been being talked about for such a very long time. Um, very excited that we can move forward. Uh, provide immediate uh, nearby parking. Uh, for the library users, and then look forward to some uh, some really much needed um, addition and renovation to the library in the future. Um, so I will now call for a vote. Um, all in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? Excellent, that passes unanimously and it will go on to finance tomorrow night. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, next item, um, triple A. Uh, review bids for Belden Main Library Literacy Office renovation project and refer the following to the Common Council for Action. 
A, authorize the mayor, Harry W. Rilling, to execute an agreement with Reed Tech LLC for Belden Avenue Library liter Literacy Volunteers Office improvements to for a total not to exceed $89,000, account number noted. B, authorize the Office of Building Management to issue change orders on the contract for a total not to exceed $8,900, funds available from account numbers noted. Uh, will someone move that item, please? Uh, Mr. Huberman, thank you. Um, okay, so we uh, we have Ms. Harris here to, uh, Sherelle's here um, to to talk about this project. Um, Sherelle, hi. Hey, ma'am, hello everyone. And thank you for allowing me to come before you this evening. So we're really excited about this program. Our literacy volunteers program serves roughly 220 students who are looking to speak English and improve um, their conditions in our country and in our city. Uh, prior to COVID, we had roughly 325 uh, students and 64 tutors. Um, we had to quickly pivot during COVID to um, become an, uh, a, um, a center that can uh, train and also um, teach online. So that took some doing with Shelly Young, who I want to credit um, for, for leading that process. Um, some students do not have the proper equipment at home in order to, um, you know, to do the online testing and to do the online classes. So we did lose some students. Um, some tutors prefer to be in person. Um, so we're hoping that um, the additional classroom will bring back students. We, we've been doing online uh, tutoring for quite some time. Uh, we have two classrooms at present and one office, and we're looking for um, a third. So the, the third will help us um, take the pressure off of, of our room bookings at the main library. As you know, we do need to renovate. Um, most of Norwalk are looking for either uh, meeting rooms or, you know, program rooms. And, um, you know, we're at capacity. So this, the additional classroom will allow us to have a third classroom. Um, and, um, and I think that's about it. So we're looking to bring, um, you know, the tutors who want to come back. Some tutors did not want to do the online. They just, just weren't able to. So we're hoping to bring back um, the students and the, um, and the tutors. Uh, with the additional classroom. So um, can I just ask, so you're currently serving 220 students in two rooms? Correct. Okay. And well, right now, right now we're not open. Right now we're, we're just doing the online. Okay. So we haven't opened again since COVID. And, and let me go back. So this, this project has been sitting, we, we started the project pre-COVID. COVID, COVID um, just, it, it put um, a damper. We just, we couldn't do the renovations during COVID. So now we're revisiting again. So now we're at the point where we're ready to move forward. But we started during COVID, but during COVID, it just put a, you know, a damper on all the plans. Um, do we have any other? Okay, um, Mr. Burnett. Oh uh, yes, thank you, Chair Smith. I, I guess my my initial question is around the funding. Um, I, I'm reading this that it's additional offices, ceilings, carpets, doors, lighting, painting, all capital capital expenses. Is this eighty nine thousand dollars approved in the capital budget? Yes, it is. It was originally approved for ninety eight thousand, and we we spent roughly six to seven thousand. We had to have the plans, um, yeah. So it was a, originally approved at ninety eight thousand, and we worked with Gill and Gill. They were the ones who came up with the plans. So so it was approved in the capital budget X Correct. number of years ago. And 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 the comptroller has just been rolling it over each year, or right. Uh, Mr. Brown, that's just for oh, 
Oh, I'm sorry, I did it again. Oh, here it goes. Yeah, I just want to answer your question. Uh, capital budget money, it does, I guess you use the term rollover. There's no action required. The capital budget money stays in the account. So it's not like operating budget that, you know, you have to do a process to, you can't really roll over operating budget. You really have to some kind, take some action to, to, to carry over. Uh, but capital budget project stays in the account and just stays on until such time we use the money or for what different reason that the, the city or ourselves we, we recommend that the project is no longer needed or something and the money the account get closed out so there's no there's no rollover process it just it just stay in the account for as long as we don't take the money away um in terms of the we have um if you look if you notice the action there's two we have enough money to cover the eighty nine thousand dollar in the in the capital account we are we are short for the contingency. I'm using a different account that I have under building management to cover it uh, because there's not enough money in the in the uh, in the uh, in in that account in the library account to cover all the contingencies. So I'm I'm tagging into a different account to cover it. That, the other account is really it's a building management uh, capital improvement account that that we use for miscellaneous stuff that happens uh, you know that that doesn't fall into any category. So it's a uh, but since it's a contingent amount, we're hoping that we all need it. But in order to meet the, generally speaking, our typical 10% contingencies, we are leveraging against that account. I think, I believe we have like maybe $92,000 in the account right now. I, so yeah, I was asking the question because I know right. that the comptroller periodically looks at all of the capital accounts to determine if the amount that has been allocated is going to be used and does a refresh uh, to say this project will move forward or this project will not move forward. So we have an accurate amount of what has been allocated for capital projects. So that's why I posed the question. Um, this was, a you know, these dollars were allocated X number of years ago, um, put on hold, all the funds still in that line item. Sorry to interrupt you. It's a, if you look at account numbers, 0920, that means the year, fiscal year 20. So it's about two, three years old. And, and I did understand your question, Greg, but yes, the controller did approve understanding why the project was stalled. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I just have a question, um, Sherelle, because okay. since the, um, the program has been 100% online and you want to bring them back in, um, you know, in light of the fact that, you know, we know it's going to be a, it's a few years away, right, this renovation, we know that. Um, but I'm just wondering if, you know, is it possible to, to you know, if you since you're just bringing them in um, after a couple of years online to just use those two rooms, are they in good enough shape? Do you think that it's possible that all the kids are going to come back into the library? I think so, because some of them can't, they don't have the equipment at home to do the online. So I believe so, yes. Do we have any other questions? As a matter of fact, people have been waiting, you know, for the office to open again. Mm -hmm. Do we have any other questions? No? Okay. All right, well then uh, that being said, I'll go ahead and call for a vote. Um, all of those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Opposed? Okay, let me let me do that again because I need to make sure I get a count. Okay, so uh, raise your hand if you are voting yes, please. Um, looks like Ms. Ayers, Ms. Smith, one, two, three, four. Opposed is... Mr. Meek abstentions. Okay, and Mr. Burnett abstains. So uh looks like it passes. Um, so okay. Thank um, you all very much. Moving on. Um review proposed school security camera enhancement project and refer recommendation to the council for action. Authorize the purchasing agent to issue a purchase order for Omni Data LLC for security camera enhancements at West Rocks. Nathan Hale, Ponus, Roten, and Tracy Schools for a total not to exceed $100,000, $100,540.70, account numbers noted. Um, school security, um, do we, who do we have here to talk about that? 
Uh, Ryan. Oh, hi, hi, Ryan. How are you? We can't hear you, Ryan, for some reason. You're not muted, but. Yeah, it doesn't look like you're muted, but we definitely can't hear you. Nope, still not. You want to um, log off and log on, and, and we can just we can move this and go on to our next slide. Well, and come back I'm to sorry, it. I'm sorry, sorry, Barbara. Um, in order to expedite this, I, I know we're long meeting here. Does anybody has any questions? Sorry to uh, interrupt everybody like this. Then we can just uh, uh, maybe we can be more specific about. Do we have any concerns? Or I think there's a memo behind it. Um, mm -hmm. And if any has anybody any questions, specific questions that that uh, we need to address. I would imagine not. I, this is really important school security and it's a few new cameras and some, uh, you know, repositioning of others. So um, I'm all for voting because I think this is really important. So uh, let's call for a vote then. Oh, did I? Did someone move that for me? Did somebody move that? Greg has a question. I did have a question. Oh, go uh, ahead. Yes, thank you, Chair. I would like to know. There's cameras currently at these schools. So if we're talking about enhancements, what are we going to do with the cameras that are currently at the school? Are they going to be repurposed somewhere else or can they be repurposed and utilized in other areas? No. <laughs> or or do they just go in the garbage? I mean, I'm trying to understand, have right. an understanding of how do we recycle these cameras because technology is going to constantly change. So, Bill, Bill, I'm sorry, Bill, do you have, I'm sorry. Bill, yeah, what you, what use can we get out of those cameras that are currently being utilized? Can I answer that or can you hear me? We can yeah. hear you. All right, thank you. I'm sorry, I'll just try to speak on Ryan's behalf. Uh, the answer is this is in addition to what's already there. So the cameras, uh, about four or five years ago, they replaced the entire systems and they didn't add enough cameras. This is to enhance the and increase the amount of cameras that are there. So we have a digital technology, we have pan tilt zoom cameras. And in these uh, schools, as I understand it, there just needs to be additional technology brought in, which will be incorporated into the central system that's uh, already there. So I don't believe any of the old cameras uh, are being uh, removed permanently. Can you guys hear me now? Oh, yep. there's, there's Ryan. There you are. Okay, so yes. <laughs> Uh, Ms. Burnett, great question. Um, so the only cameras that we'll be removing are old analog cameras. Uh, those cameras were installed, to my knowledge, back in 2012 or 2013. Um, and imagine that you're watching a Dateline special and there's a uh, gas station camera that's really grainy. That's what some of the cameras look like. So um, the digital cameras that were installed a little bit later, 2016, 2017, 2018, those will remain in place. The only replacements will be on the analog cameras. In addition to that, we'll be adding more digital cameras to cover blind spots. Uh, the last time this project was done, uh, you know, six or seven years ago, uh, industry, industry standards have changed. Uh, just a few years ago, we only had to um, cover exterior exits and certain areas within the building. Um, so really, this is just a more robust coverage um, to cover um, all our hallway spaces, exterior uh, locations, um, and so forth. Um, so again, the, the only ones that will be replaced will be broken or analog cameras. The digital cameras remain in place, and then we'll add additional digital cameras to blind spots. And, and we have no purpose or use of those analog cameras anywhere else in the city? They're, they're, they're antiquated. Okay, thank you. Mr. Meek? Yeah, I just say, I think I kind of agree with Mr. Burnett, but... Um... This is de minimis. This should not come through capital. This should come out of MPS operating budget. Sorry, Bill. Thanks. Mr. Huvelman. Thank you, Chairperson Smith. Um, Ryan, just a question about this. Uh, how many schools, by, by this particular project, does this bring all the schools up to date? Or no, this, this is, so when I was here in um, March, I believe, uh, that was phase one, which covered our high schools. This right. is complete phase two, so all the middle schools. And then the beginning of phase three, 
which will be the elementary schools. So we're going to have one more round of this Correct. Uh, coming our way. Okay, Correct. All right. thank you. Any other questions? Okay, so um, I will call for a vote. Um, all in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Okay, opposed? Mr. Meek is opposed. The item passes five to one. Thank you. Okay, um, moving on to C, review referral from Conservation Commission recommending the allocation of open space capital budget funds as a grant to Norwalk Land Trust for open space acquisition and refer recommendation to planning and zoning for Connecticut State Statutes, section 8-24 review and to the Common Council for approval. Authorize the mayor, Harry W. Reeling, to execute any and all agreements, documents, instruments, and amendments there too, as may be necessary to grant funds from the open space capital budget funds to the Norwalk Land Trust Inc. for acquisition of 12, 14, and 16 Stephen Mather Road in the amount of $200,000, account numbers noted. Uh, who would like to move that? Somebody, <laughs> Mr. Hufelman, thank you. Um, okay, so uh, let me turn this over to Alexis Cherichetti. There you are, hi Alexis. So my name is Alexis Karaketti. I'm your senior environmental officer and staff to the Conservation Commission. Um, they received a request from the Land Trust to utilize a portion of the Open Space Fund, and uh, sp specifically $200,000 of the Open Space Fund, um, in the Land Trust's quest to purchase um, these three properties in West Norwalk. Uh, the Conservation Commission reviewed that request at their May 9th meeting. And they determined that it would be um, the best use for the uh, fund at this time. Um, and that there were no other viable options that they see for use of the fund um, uh, that are on the near horizon. They have seen a variety of requests in the, over the last uh, couple years. And um, the last two of those requests were, were denied. Those were for non-acquisition uses of the open space fund. Um, and, but this one they, they determined um, is very much in line with, with the objectives and goals of the fund. So um, the, the fund itself is detailed in chapter 35, article three of the city code. And it spells out the um, the goals of the fund, the 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 uses, and um, the procedures. Um, and so this would be um, under thirty five eleven, which lists the permitted uses of funds. Uh, letter or paragraph C is contributing to the cost of land acquisitions by not for profit organizations such as your land trust when consistent with and in furtherance of the purposes set forth in uh, section 35.9 of the same article. And uh, nine talks about the purpose and creation of the fund, which is to preserve or create open space and protect its natural resources by providing financial support for initiatives and activities that primarily seek to preserve parcels of open space in perpetuity. Um, so um, that is in the packet. There is the, the report from the commission um, who voted unanimously to, to support the request for use of the fund. Mr. Meek. Uh, thanks. So, I mean, this looks like a great deal, but I was like, what's the catch here? We're getting six acres of land for $1.2 million. That's less than half market rate. What, why are we getting this? Um, so this is great, by the way, but it seems too good to be true. That's why I have to ask. All right. Uh, Mr. Baskin from the Land Trust is also here if you'd like to hear from, from him. And I do want to clarify that the request is for the Land Trust to purchase the land. So the city itself is not purchasing this land. It will be purchased by the, by the Land Trust. Understood. We're, we're kicking in 200 grand to whatever. Yeah, I'm Richard Baskin. I'm the treasurer of the land trust. And the um, reason you're, you're absolutely right in the sense that um, this is a, uh, a 
very op- very opportunistic purchase. And we got to this point is that the purchaser is someone who used to live in the uh, who, who grew up in the area and is buying the uh, buying all the their the uh, uh, an, an entire parcel. And to um, he plans he and his family plan to live in a in, live in a house in, in four acres that is uh, that is adjacent to the to the parcels, and um, he the land trust made a uh, made a proposal to, uh, to 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 buy the under, undeveloped land. The the, um, the sellers wanted to sell the whole parcel as one for three million dollars. So the story is that the the purchaser um, was interested in, in buying the house and, and four acres. He knew that the land trust was interested in in acquiring the the um, parcels that we're we're looking at here, <clears throat> and he was willing to sell those parcels to us at his cost, mm-hmm. so that it would lower his uh, financing. Uh, financial requirements and two is that uh, he would um, he had had offers from developers to to develop the property but he uh, pref- he preferred that it uh, remain open space and so the we are we are get, uh, essentially getting his price thank you you're welcome and so, uh, so you know, reading in the back, uh, you know, there, there's uh, yeah, diversity of pollinators, birds, flora, wildlife in Norwalk, uh, you know, here in Norwalk. So, so that's really great. Um, but I think another thing that's really significant is that it's, you know, it, it's, um, it abuts the Darien property, right? The open space and the Stephen Mather uh, homestead. So, it, you know, it makes it, you know, for a, a really uh, welcoming um open space throughout both areas is that correct that's that is uh that is correct where there is um uh, approximate we're going to get up to approximately uh 27 acres with uh with these with this acreage where the uh darian darian land Tr- land trust has uh Thir- uh, 13, almost 14 acres, the Steeler, Stephen Mather Homestead <clears throat> has, pardon me, has another approximate. That's right, 13 and some odd acres, right? Seven acres, you're right. <clears throat> and that, this will bring it up to about 27, 30 acres. Mr. Huvelman. Thank you, uh, Chairperson Smith. Um, so the the land trust will uh, uh, own this property and maintain this property then correct correct so the city was, isn't going to have any responsibility for long term upkeep correct we we will the stuff. land trust will assume the steward stewardship of the land um there's quite a bit of um invasive species and uh um well, it looks like you have non natives in there. So we will, over time, uh, have a remediation plan and clear There's that some out. wetland issues on that property, also. Yeah, there is. There, there are wetlands there. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Uh, let's vote on that. All in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, that passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, moving on to school construction projects, we have a very, very long uh, night here. So Alan, is there something, can we just uh, touch upon? Yeah, thank you, yeah. um, I I don't think we need to do the update this time because um, I think some of these items cover some of these updates. So I would request that we, we skip item D1 and go straight to D2, please. Okay. Great. Um, okay. So uh, item two, review proposals for Norwalk High School structural threshold peer review and refer recommendation to council for action. 
Um, A, authorize the mayor, Harry W. Rilling, to execute an agreement with Russell and Dawson, Inc. to provide structural threshold peer review services for the Norwalk High School project for a total not to exceed $32,200, account number noted, and B, authorize a contingency for additional services as may be required for a total not to exceed $5,000, account number noted. Who would like to move that, please? Mr. Burnett, thank you. Um, uh, yes, go, Alan. Yes, I <laughs> just speed up. Just got um, it. <laughs> I know we're yeah. required to do this. So. Yeah. All, all the school projects, uh, the state uh, Department of Administration Service School Construction requires to do for major project where there's substantial structural work, require a uh, third party peer review. That's also a core requirement since uh, I don't know if some of you may remember the La Pianza Plaza down in Bridgeport. Uh, so yeah. generate from that, the building code change that for projects such as North High School, a large construction project require peer review. And this is exactly what we're doing. Uh, and we, we advertised it and we got three proposal and uh, the firm that we're recommending is the lowest one. At the same time, we, we, are, we, we, are, we know them. And, uh, so we're just making a recommendation uh, to the commit, committee for approval. Okay. Um, any questions? All righty, all in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? Mr. Meek is opposed, passes five to one. All right, moving on to uh, item three, under school construction, review recommendation for movers for Cranberry School and refer the following to the Common Council for Action. Authorize the purchasing agent to issue a purchase order to William B. Meyer, Inc., for moving services at Cranberry School in accordance with the state contract number noted for an amount not to exceed $39,967.75. Funds are available and account numbers noted. Item B and B authorized the purchasing agent to issue change orders on this purchase order for total not to exceed $10,000. Um, who would like to move that? Mr. Huvelman, thank you very much. Um, this is exciting. Yes, tell us uh, Mike, uh, so we're yes. at the end, <laughs> right? Uh, so this is a typical service that we've utilized for all the school projects. Uh, at the completion of the Cranberry Elementary School, all of the teachers' uh, belongings from the building will need to be relocated to the new building. And uh, this proposal is the services required to uh, make that move. Um, it's basically for uh, 13 movers, a supervisor, um, for seven days, um, and I don't see any issue getting all the stuff moved within that time period. Great. Teachers pack, pack up some things, and they just come in and move it all over. Terrific. That, that process has started for stuff that they don't need, and it'll continue through the end of the year until all the belongings are packed up, and then we'll get them into their new locations. Great. Any questions? Mr. Burnett? Uh, yes, thank you, Chair, Chair Smith. I would only ask uh, for on item B there that you add an account number for the ten thousand dollars. That would be appreciated. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, uh, yeah, I could clarify that right now. It'll basically be the same account number as the uh, item A. Right, uh, just so that as oh. it moves on to the uh, full council, there's an account number listed. Thank you. Okay, so uh, with that uh, amendment of adding the account number, I'll call for a vote. All in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? All right, that carries unanimously. Excellent for Cranberry. Uh, item number four, review request to increase design services contingency with Antonazi Associates for Jefferson School and refer the following to the Council for Action. Authorize, the increase, authorize to increase the contingency allowance for additional services for Antonazi Associates for Jefferson School Improvement Project for an additional amount of $18,000 as part of the project closeout account number noted. Um, do I have a motion? Mr. Burnett. Um, and, uh, you know, this, this was due to the contaminated soil and hazardous materials that were found, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, as, as well as well as the uh, the creation of a school construction website to uh, bring the community mm -hmm. up to speed with uh, the progress that's being made on the construction projects. At the end of these projects, you know, we go back um, 
and reconcile all the amounts. And uh, the school construction website came at the very end. Um, we had been using the original contingency to cover the hazmat, um, uh, portions of the hazmat work that was done at Jefferson. Um, and, you know, when, when the school construction website came about, it, uh, it requires this uh, amendment to increase the contract. Well, the school construction website is a is a beautiful thing. Uh, it's really great for the for the uh, residents, uh, Mr. Meek. Yeah, thanks. It just seems a little late to the game. Like, why wasn't this presented? Th this project's done over a year, right? Why Why are we just getting a bill now? It seems a little late to bill. Well, I, I I can explain that. So so the construction website was something that was kicked off more recently. We had we had been we had utilized um, all of the all of the hazmat services through the original uh, contingency amount that we had generated or that was generated as part of the original contract, and um, seeing that uh, the Jefferson project had a large fr uh, free balance, we opted to utilize some of that free balance to generate the construction website. It's actually been in progress for around I would say two to three months, um, the website itself, the creation of it. Further questions? Comments? All right, let's vote. Um, all in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? And Mr. Meek opposed, and that passes five to one. Okay. Item five, review bid for the Brookside Elementary School Montessori first grade classroom upgrade project and refer the following to the Common Council for action. A, authorize the mayor, Harry W. Reeling, to execute an agreement with Retech LLC for the Brookside Elementary School Montessori first grade classroom upgrade project for a total not to exceed $51,000, account numbers noted. B, authorize the NPS Facilities Department to issue change orders on this contract for a total not to exceed $5,100. Funds are available and account number noted. Um, and who would like to move that? That would be me. Uh, thank you, Council. Wait, I need, I need a council member to move it. Sorry, Mr. Hugelman. And go ahead, Bill. You can go ahead and speak to it. Thank you, uh, Councilperson Smith. Uh, yes, the Montessori program uh, was introduced in the Norwalk Public Schools uh, four or five years ago, and it's uh, progressively increasing. We started with two classrooms for pre-K. We then added a third classroom for K. And now we are about to um, add a fourth class for the first grade because these students are moving up. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the Montessori program is well over 100 years old. It started in 1907 in Rome, Italy from, by Maria Montessori. She was an educator. And part of this program is uh, students actually prepare meals. Uh, they clean their environment. The custodians love when that happens, and they engage in hands-on learning. So when uh, they first started, I didn't know anything about this program, and since we continue to build their spaces, and one classroom actually has an observation window, when you actually see the students in there preparing and cooking a meal, part of this renovation would be to uh, demo an existing classroom, um, put in appliances, a refrigerator, a microwave, a stove, an oven, a dishwasher, and in some of the older installations, we actually put a, a washer and a dryer. Um, so what we have here is the same vendor who um, is um, proposing to do work in the library. Um, they've come across um, with their uh, cost of $51,000. Uh, to do this, uh, this job this summer, this Money has been allocated in the 23-24 um, capital budget. And this is a project that we uh, certainly hope to do this summer in anticipation for the um, growing up or as the uh, kids grow from the K to the first grade classroom. Um, we uh, have future plans for a second grade, a third grade, and so on and so forth. So it's a gradual process that Brookside Elementary School will be introducing. 
Mr. Make. Uh, thanks, Bill. Um, glad to see this program going forward after we hatched it, what, four or five years ago now? Um, I'm a little concerned what I'm hearing from NPS in terms of programming cuts, like I hear <clears throat> ROTCs being cut, all senior electives, et cetera. Is, is this on the chopping block? And if it were, I mean, you would stop these spending this money if if you found out about that sooner than later? Or how, how soon do you plan on spending this money is my question. Uh, we want to spend this money um, July 1st, and there's been no talk of this program um, not returning next summer, uh, next uh, fall. That's, that's good to hear. Thanks, Bill. Um, Bill, it. I have a question. Uh, yeah, I have a question. I, I don't remember exactly the amount. I, you know, I remember during the capital process, the request was to move some funds from one account to uh, to from one project to another. Is this the is this the amount? Um, does it fully cover, or will you have left over? I don't remember uh, the amount that, that you moved over. Yes, um, I can only speak on the construction aspect of it, and um, this is the amount that will cover the construction. Got it. If there's Got anything it. curriculum based, uh, that would not uh, be um, with my department. Right. Okay. And that would fall under operating curriculum, right? As opposed to this is capital budget. Correct. This is capital. Right. Budget. right. Okay. Um, any questions? Further questions? Okay. Uh, I will call for a vote. All in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? Abstentions? That carries unanimously. Perfect. Let us move on. Um, item six, review bids for the Nathan Hale Middle School HVAC project and refer the following to the Common Council for Action. A, authorize the mayor, Harry W. Wheeling, to execute an agreement with South Sabia Electric Contractors, Inc. for the Nathan Hale Middle... Nathan Hale Middle School HVAC project for a total not to exceed $992,460, funds available and account noted, and B, authorize the NPS Facilities Department to issue change orders on this contract for a total not to exceed $92,460, funds are available and account numbers noted. Um, do I have a motion? Mr. Burnett, thank you very much. Um, these are electrical upgrades and air conditioning, is that correct? Yes, I'll speak to this one uh, as well. Uh, so um, a couple of years ago, I've been in front of uh, this committee about uh, temporary air conditioning uh, for a number of schools. I think we did three or four by now. Um, Nathan Hale is the next one up. And what we plan to do is put window style air conditioners in the windows, uh, bring electrical power to each space. A dedicated cir uh, circuit is required. You can't just tap into a courtesy outlet uh, that's already in there. In addition to that, in the areas that do not have windows, we have to put what we call a mini split system. That is an evaporator on the wall and the condensing unit either outside or on the roof. So this is a program that we've been progressing over the years and we plan to, uh, we did receive approval starting uh, July 1st. And we plan to have this project completed uh, before the end of the summer. If not, then just maybe the first or second week of September. So South Sabia electrical contractors, um, they have done this type of work uh, for us at uh, Roten Middle School a number of years back. Uh, that was very successful. They were a great uh, contractor to work with, and they also do a lot of work with the city. So we're happy to have them on board and uh, we're happy to temper a middle school because um, air conditioning is a more popular thing these days. We need to introduce it. Not just more popular, really important. You know, I was in, uh, in yeah. Ponus uh, for the STEAM presentations on Monday. And, uh, you know, I worked in that building for nine years before there was air conditioning. And I used to joke and, you know, I was joking with everyone there um, on Monday that, uh, you know, we used to walk out of that building feeling like some kind of farm animal, you know, <laughs> it's so hot. And just the the joy. And I know it's a renovate is new and it was, you know, it was more extensive work, but it's just a beautiful thing to be comfortable um, in a school building when everyone can, you know, focus on what's really important. So uh, it's really great that you're doing this. And the mini splits are great, too.
uh, energy efficient, uh, more, you know, less expensive to run. So um, that's great. Um, Mr. Meek. Um, thank you. I, I'm not opposed to this, um, you know, other than the fact it's double what the school cost to build originally. But Bill, how, how many other millions of dollars do we need to dump into Nathan Hale to, you know, kind of get it nice? Do, do, is there a schedule that you have of what we need there? Thanks. Let me, Brian, let me, let me answer this question. Uh, I've been asked uh, by the city to look at the overall 25 year plan for school construction. Uh, Nathan Hale is one of the schools that, that we're looking at to, to a potential uh, complete replacement, uh, either renovate as new or new construction, new building. The complicate, the difficulty with that is really finding swing space. Um, so there's many challenges. I'm, we're looking at a plan to for for, for Nathan Hell, for West Rock, for Tracy, uh, Woolpit, and also uh, Fox Run. So we are looking at it. We've been looking at it for the last, I would say, six to nine months, and we're still looking at it. It's not a simple thing to to figure. It's a multi million million dollar strategy the plan for 25 years but we're only looking at the first five six schools right now uh, nathan hill is one of those uh, what me and bill is working on is that these are these are these are the strategy here does the school that potential gets a full renovation we are looking at any improvement we do it's about 10 years the max uh, maximum life kind of thing so we are not looking at putting in you know replacing a central system air conditioning will probably cost you 10 to 15 million dollars because more than the equipment itself you have potential abatement requirement once you put that work and uh, that work because you still need fresh air even though today is uh, you got uh, mm -hmm. you got a uh, condensing coil and stuff you got to replace ceiling tiles and well, more than ceiling tiles you got to replace new ceilings and and, and again abatement and on and on it probably take two summers to do and stuff like that so what we do what bill's project here is really just put air conditioning unit for windows windows systems and stuff again we're looking at this eight to ten year plan but meanwhile we are looking for looking for a long-term plan to look at those schools thanks alan so i mean in terms of pecking order i would think tracy first fox run then wolf Pit, then nathan hill uh, those are i thought those are the four you mentioned yeah, yeah, it's also all of them is probably in the east side of town right now because we we will be talking. I, I, we will bring those plans back. It's not that simple. It's a. Uh, it's really it's um uh, getting swing space, swing space and share yeah. and stage and stuff like that. Which one go first? Which one go second? It's more than just like which one the condition of which building it is kind of thing. It's a uh, we got to find the, the right balance. You know, so like again, it's it's a complicated process. Again, it's not. There's a lot of thought behind it already, but again, we haven't developed anything. Uh, we are potentially looking at acquiring uh, property, so uh, just to build a new building so that we can use that as swing space. But at the same time, we don't want, by the time the school goes in there, you know, it's too old for that. I mean, it's been 10 years or something like that. So we are considering all those factors right now. So uh, again, we haven't decided anything. We are, we're still in conversation about it. So uh, we will bring that to you, to the to the Common Council as soon as we have some Better idea instead of just purely speculating. Uh, we got to look at the financial side. I think I'm scheduled. I'm scheduled a meeting with Henry backwards to see what the affordability of the city's financial situation is, how much we can do in the next ten years, and and all that gets into play. So, I I appreciate it, Alan. Your hard work and everything, and and like you know, so let's let's put these new ACs in it. Nathan Hale, it, 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 would there be any reusability on like the the pumps or anything? Could we could we set it up so where like those things could be moved to another building at some point and not just abandoned with uh, a demolition of Nathan Hale five ten years from now? Thanks. Yes, uh, again. I we we Back. can certainly. Um... Uh, reposition those split systems and those window air conditions can go uh, on a temporary basis in some of the other schools. So they won't go to complete waste. I don't see that happening. Thanks, Bill. And thanks, Alan. Sure. Any other comments, questions? Okay, um, let's vote. All in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? Abstentions? That carries unanimously. Okay, moving on to item seven.
review process associated with the submission of school indoor air quality HVAC grant applications to the state and refer the following to the Council for Action. Upon receipt and review of the proposals, recommendations will be available at the committee meeting. Um, authorize the mayor, Harry W. Reeling, to execute an agreement with the Consulting Engineering Services, Inc., CES, to provide conceptual HVAC design services and cost estimating services necessary in compliance with the state's indoor air quality improvement grant application requirements for a total not to exceed $72,000, account number noted, and authorize a design contingency allowance for additional services as may be required for a total not to exceed $10,000, top numbers noted. Um, would someone please move that? Mr. Hufelman, thank you very much. Barbara, I just want, I think technically, I think what we need to do is read the action the way it's on the agenda and then both oh, and then, agenda. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, oh, so, oh this didn't agenda. make it. This didn't make it onto, okay, no, fine. No, we didn't okay. make it on it. I will read it that way and then amend it. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Alan. Okay. So um, authorize the mayor, Harry W. Rilling, to execute an agreement with name of mechanical consulting firm, uh, to provide conceptual <laughs> HVAC design services and cost estimating services in compliance with the state's indoor air quality improvement grant application requirements for total not to exceed amount to be determined, uh, which we now know to be $72,000, um, account number noted, and be authorized a design contingency allowance for additional services as may re be required for a total not to exceed, amount to be determined, uh, account number noted, and we now know to be amended at $10,000. Uh, $10, um, so um, I would like to uh, move to uh, amend those items with the correct um, Consulting engineering services and the correct amount. So, uh, do I? Let's just go ahead and vote on that. Uh, so, um, vote on the amended language. Uh, please raise your hand. Opposed? You're opposing the amended language. Can you repeat the entire question? I am. I, I am. It, it should go on next agenda. Or full council. So it's not fair to the public. Um, okay, so let's um all right. So then let me just let me just reread it and we'll we'll do I need to reread it? I don't need to reread it. If you could just reread it for me, I'm so sorry. Of course. Okay, of course. Okay, so item seven, I will re read it as written, okay? And then um, we can um, add in the, um, the name and the amount, okay. Item seven, review process associated with the submission of school indoor air quality HVAC grant applications to the state and refer the following to the council for action. Upon receipt and review of the proposals, recommendations will be available at the committee meeting. A, authorize the mayor, Harry W. Rilling to execute an agreement with name of the mechanical consulting firm to provide conceptual HVAC design services and cost estimating services in compliance with state's indoor air quality improvement grant application requirements for a total not to exceed amount to be determined an account number noted. B, authorize a design contingency allowance for additional services as may be required for a total not to exceed amount to be determined, account number noted. Do I have a motion? But the item is read. Okay, Mr. Huvelman makes the motion. Okay, so we do have the name of the company and we do have the amounts. Um, those came in today. Am I correct about that? Okay. The, the, I, I just want to explain myself a little bit. Um, okay, the, please do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's um it's it's common it's usual and common whatever this kind of thing so it's really it's uh i think uh it's it's you know there's there's so much going on with with all of these projects and these these proposal came in uh not last week the week before i was on vacation last week so i tried to get these the agenda out last the week before and we, we didn't i didn't have an opportunity to view all the proposal that comes in so it's really a placeholder, but very specific information to the public that the number will be available at the meeting. Um, so I came back Monday and I was working on other things, including the uh, amended agenda and stuff. So I didn't have a chance to review it. After I reviewed it, 
uh, I prepared, I updated the memo and, and, and sent it only this afternoon, I was able to get it to everybody. But the same time is that in terms of uh, public aware uh, uh, knowledge of this, the item is on the agenda. It's uh, it's missing the dollar amount of the firm, but it's really, it's a, uh, it's a it's a it's a uh, supplemental information for the item uh, with clarification and um, and at the end of the day you know what it is going to common council assuming the this committee review and approve it it will go to the common council the public will have an opportunity to see it uh, for the full action so I would they are very specific schedule that coming up the, the grant application haven't even come out yet. This is a sec. Um, let me exp let me go for a little bit about this whole whole project a little bit. Um, the state last year offered this. Grant HVAC grant. Uh, I think the state has about 150 million dollars uh, from uh, from the, maybe from the federal government uh, related to COVID um, for for indoor air quality improvements. Uh, they went for a first round of uh, uh, applications and award, and they still have substantial amount of money left. And the city, the board of education submitted requests, but then it's uh, due to some technical reason, the, the, the application, the, the system, the state system did not accept it. Uh, so the city wasn't able to tap into it. Uh, various community has re received money for the, for this, from this grant. But at the same time, it's anticipated, we've been advised that the, that the second round of this grant come out in August. But the grant application had a lot of requirements, including uh, designs, uh, cost estimating, and the city's uh, approval of, of funding for the project before they would consider it. So anticipating this grant, the second round of grant application coming up, um, we were asked to look at this to get ourselves in position to request this. Uh, some of the project that typically would not get reimbursement. The state reimbursement does not apply to uh, replacement existing equipment. So you have a boiler that needs to be replaced. They don't reimburse it. So this race, it's only like renovation is new. I, I think I listed the, the, those items in, in, the, in the back of memo. Um, it's really re, uh, new programming, renovated is new. Um, environmental remediation um, and some of these other items. So again, a lot of the HVAC stuff, re repair, replacement kind of stuff, it's not reimbursable. So this is opportunity to get reimbursement for, for project that we are looking ahead that we, we need to do, all of education need to do. Uh, these projects include the include, uh, Brooks, Brookside, Marvin, uh, uh, Silvermine has boilers, uh, and uh, uh, Primate Man, Primate Man, as much as we think is new, is, is finished in 2004 or so, so it's about 20 years already. So the air conditioning system has failed and a uh, component, uh, Bill can get into it a little bit more. The component has failed and it is kind of end of life because it's over 20, it's going to be 20 years old and more. So eventually in a few, in a couple of years, primary man air conditioning replacement would be an item, but at the same time would not be reimbursable at the state. Um, so this is an opportunity to capture those things. Uh, we're looking at these project combined potentially over $10 million. Uh, but at the same time, it's that um, um, the city is asking Actually, we are, we actually we are submitting a request to the state that this pro these project will be considered as part of our uh, new reimbursable rate of sixty percent. So for some for most of these items we're requesting, uh, instead of getting no reimbursement, we're going to be getting sixty percent reimbursement. So this is only really the initial step uh, before even get we even seen the grant application. We want to be in position to be applying for this. So there's substantial money in these projects and uh, potential reimbursement from the state. So I, I'm scheduling to meet with the, uh, 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 Henry Dakowitz regarding uh, what is the affordability of the city to, to look at these projects and, and potentially get reimbursement project that we need to do in the future that, that, uh, that we will not get reimbursement. So there's still a lot more conversation to have, but this is still the first step. And then after they do that, after we hire the, structure, uh, the, the mechanical engineer to look at these buildings and they will come up with a cost estimate and then we can decide how much we want to ask, how much, how much, how many projects, and what is the total financial package that we may be asking the state for. So it is a lengthy thing. So um, um, I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. I just want to add that uh, the schools that uh, Alan had mentioned, um, in addition, there are two more that's Naramac and uh, Rowayton. And the group that we are speaking of, CES, uh, they conducted a mechanical review in 2021, part of a facility assessment, and they came up with these items. 
Um, we uh, have blessed these items. Uh, they came up with all these items minus Brian McMahon, which is not part of their study back in 2021. Uh, they're, they are a reputable firm. They are the engineer of record at, at Cranberry. Uh, they are the engineer of record at um, Jefferson as well. So when we speak of uh, CES and their 70, I think it was $72,000, um, that is money uh, well worth spending. And that is far below the other competition who also submitted bids. I just want to add that part. Okay, thanks, Bill. I mean, I you know, I think you know the language has been here. Uh, it's been published. I know that you know we had the blanks for the um, the company and the um, and the amounts, but you know the the public really does have almost a week, you know, uh, with this information, and there will certainly be the opportunity for the public to speak at the Common Council meeting. Um, so I do believe, and and considering that you know it, you know. We do have, um, as chairs, the ability to move directly to the agenda. Um, I, I think that it is worth voting on because the downside, I think, is you know we don't want to lose out on this. Um, uh, any kind of state reimbursement is really, really important uh, for us. So, so that's my personal opinion um, that I believe that we should you know move forward with the vote because there's just too much at risk. Um, so, um, Mr. Meek, you have a comment. Oh, thanks, Barbara. So are are you not going to vote on this or are you going to vote on this? Yes, I'm, I I believe we should vote. OK, so I, I'm sorry to rule here, but um, I'm going to make a motion under Mason's that you have two thirds of the attendees here tonight add the vendor name and the dollar amount to the minutes. And once that's done, I think you have a, a vote you can vote on. OK. Um, Mr. Burnett. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you, Chair Smith. Yes, I was going to uh, make a motion to amend the item as read to insert the name of the consulting firm and the appropriate dollar amounts that have been shared with us by the staff. Second. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Mr. Burnett has made the motion to add the dollar amounts and the uh, the name of the firm. Um, all in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Okay. Uh, that passes unanimously. Great. Okay. Do we have to vote again on the yes. item? No, okay. I, I just made the motion to you, That's amend. what I thought. Yeah, you're I made the motion to amend what was what was read, and the mo what you read was that motion. The item is amended; it needs to be voted right. on. Right, right. So I I made a motion to amend the item as read, and we just voted on it. Okay. So did we just vote on approving my amendment? And now we, we have to your your amendment passed with more than two thirds vote. So it's officially right. in the agenda. Now we so have now to we vote, vote on, on the, the item. item. Now I don't we vote on the correct information. Now we vote on the, the item. Parliamentary correct. BS. correct. Okay. Okay. So now we will vote on the item as amended. Please raise your hand if you approve. Okay. Opposed? Abstentions? All right. That passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Thanks for the help along there, guys. Um, I okay, I appreciate everybody's eight. effort here. What's that? No, I just appreciate everybody's uh, working on this. Yes. <laughs> um, it's a okay. last minute thing that we need to take care of. That's, uh, anyway, okay. okay. Um, item eight, information purposes, review request to allocate special appropriation funds to traffic mobility and parking for traffic intersection improvements and to DPW for drainage improvements at the intersection of South Main Street, Meadow Street, Wilson Avenue as relates to the South Norwalk School Project. So this is, uh, we're not voting tonight, but we're getting uh, some, an update here on safe routes to school. Um, go ahead, Alan, you're gonna. Yeah, as part of uh, the South Norwalk School Project, uh, you know, some of, the, uh, uh, some of the comments that we got uh, since the day one, 
uh, recognizing that you know there's no no piece of property itself not always going to be perfect. At the same time, there are concerns about you know safe route to school, and then there's uh, the corner of the property and that intersection. It's a uh, it has a uh, flooding issues on time to time and heavy high tide and heavy rain. Uh, as well as the intersection is awkward. Uh, we have done the traffic counts and stuff, and there's no requirements to to um, to add traffic lights or anything else. But at the same time, the configuration of that uh, railroad abutment, the old, old spur line, it's a problem, uh, uh, sight line wise. So um, the strategy here is that uh, we would like to continue to move the, the school project forward without delays related to like, you know, existing condition issues. So we had, uh, I had identified some remaining funds from uh, from Pona School and also from uh, Jefferson School. And uh, we, ha I had started the, uh, because of scheduling, so we actually went to a board estimate on Monday to uh, to propose a, a, a funding using close out, taking a, a million dollar from the Pona School level of money, uh, and then a million dollar from the Jefferson School project to, to uh, and then allocated to traffic and mobility, a million dollars and, and the DPW a million dollar to help solve the existing condition, which have an impact on the school project, sub North school project, because flooding and intersection improvement is, is indirectly, even though we are not fully impacting, the school is not impacting an intersection, but, improve, but correcting the existing or improving existing condition is, it's a, it's a substantial component of the operation of the school in the future. So I just want to let everybody know so that this, the special program went through a, a board estimate on Monday. It's scheduled to go to PNC and then they have to go to the Finance Committee of Common Council and the full Common Council for approval. So it is part of our kind of like co co cooperative effort between the different divisions of city to solve existing condition and, and try to find money that, that we can help to, to make this happen. Yeah, no action is requ requested. It's just it's just for your information that this is this is the strategy and this is uh, being proposed. Mr. May. Yeah, thanks. Uh, what, when's Hatch and Bailey getting out of there? Where and where are they going? Hatch and Bailey, it's uh, we're closed down the business. They've gone for about three months now. Oh, uh, Alan, they're they have a thirty foot sign out front, and there's millions of plants at the place. Who's who's working there? That's that's uh that's what's your Corvell. Corvell. Uh, Corvell Landscaping. Uh, they are scheduled to move out in uh, I think it's should, October this year, end of the end, end of planting should, season. Isn't that false advertising? Shouldn't they take the Hatch and Bailey sign down finally? It, it's huge. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I haven't been. Yeah. Uh, I'm say it. It's. Yeah. It looks like Hatch and Bailey's still doing business there, and we're not putting a school in. <laughs> I mean, yeah. if you drive by it. <laughs> well, I, I'll take care of it. Well, yeah, I look. I don't know. I just doesn't look like we're building a school there. It looks like it's a nursery still. We are just, yeah, just begin. We are, we are in design. That's fine. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll make it happen. Thanks. I, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. No, I no, it's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's you know, it, it would be nice if the architect would put up a big sign that said, hey, this is what's coming what, when we have some architecturals. Um, I don't know. It just doesn't look like anything's happening, honestly. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's Thanks. that's fair. That's fair. I, yeah. I didn't even know the sign up there. So we, we work on it. And uh, it, actually, it goes actually your idea, halfway your down idea Meadow Street, good. Hatch and Bailey. Come yeah. on in. <laughs> yeah. Alan. Alan um, had me um, in charge of that area. But um, yes, I most of the time the the trees and all their shrubs are there. But yes, we can certainly. I'll go. We can take the sign down. Definitely. Actually, I, I like the idea. Stop putting a sign up for the, yeah. for the you know, we do have yeah. some, we do have some initial uh, design concept right. that we have already. And uh, maybe it's a good, good, yeah, it's just. Yeah, just, and the contractors are going to start moving in shortly. Yeah, we are at this uh, design development phase. And, um, and uh, we actually going to, we are scheduling to go to planning and zoning for special permit in the probability. Uh, actually, we submitted the application. Uh, and uh, probably in Ju July, we probably go to the, the public hearings on that. We had three meetings with the public about the, the parent groups and stuff to talk about, you know, the future of the school kind of thing. And um, 
one other interesting, I know it's getting late, but at the same time, since we we're talking about this a little bit, it's kind of very interesting because like the construction of this school is scheduled to start next next spring. Um, but this, the construction schedule is about, I would say, around 16 to 18 months kind of thing. One of the problem we face is when takes construction industry is that, you know, for normal high school, you know, when it's construction is three years of building construction, when a generator takes 18 months to deliver, it's not a problem. But for a school that only takes 18 months to uh, to complete, when when the ge when generator it takes 14, 18 months to deliver, it's a problem. So what we are actually looking at now is the early bid package to consider electrical switches, which is a, a problem in the industry, uh, uh, generators, steel, and also the uh, do an early patch for demolition and site preparation work, so we can get head start on some of these ordering material and get uh, get things laid out uh, earlier. So there is uh, there is some planning involved to try to um, be kind of re reactive to the current marketing supply chain issues. So we are we, that's that's some of the stuff we're doing behind the scene. Mr. Burnett. Yes, thank you, Chair Smith. Uh, Alan, I guess my question is somewhat related to what you were just sharing as to what is the sequencing of the the traffic improvement and drainage improvements? Are you are you seeing those occurring at the same time as the school construction is going on, or do you envision those improvements happening before school construction starts? I don't think those things are happening. The goal is to get get them. It's really up to the two. It's really, I think the, the 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 goal here is to allocate this money to the two departments, and they are aware of the priority in terms of the, the school needs here. Um, I'm trying to get them to do this as quickly as possible, so be so that would be. It's going to be very hard to get everything finished before school opens. We are you know, the school construction project. We are really pushing the schedule here. Uh, but at the same time, it's that they, you know once we move this money over to 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 create these accounts, uh, they're going to hire, they have to go out hire design engineers and on and on. And, and potentially the drainage piece, it could be more than a million dollars. Most likely it would be more, depending on what it is, it could be more than a million dollars. So there'd be additional money that needed. So, but at the same time is that we are doing our best we can to, to get these things in place uh, before school open, but there's, there's going to be challenges. So again, they, you know, they're, they're, if we don't, if the, it all depends on what the evaluation come back is how how big a project is to deal with drainage and the traffic is looking to potential reconfigure the, the intersection so and, and and things like that so there are the utility relocation involved and stuff like that so it, it's um it's 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 all probability everything won't be done by the time we open school but at the same time is that we are starting those process it, it just seems like there'll be a lot of activity in that in that area between building the school, correcting the drainage issues, the traffic and intersection improvements all occurring at the same time. Uh, that just sound, seems like a, a lot of activity. Yes. Um, and sidewalk improvements that we're looking to do. Right. Right. Uh, the drainage, again, until we do this, do the analysis, engineer analysis, I don't know what it is, but there's a good probability that it's actually in the, in the drain. The reason why we're having some flooding issue is it's actually not in the drainage system. It's actually in the in the uh, inlet area. The intersection has about 12 catch basin. It, go, it, it tie, all tied to one drain line, about 30 inches that go into the into the uh, mud flats in the inlets. Uh, we, at this point, we think that it's a siltation building up at the, at the outfall and creating this problem. So potentially dredging is required. So if dredging is required, then it's, a, it's not site work. It's, it's not, I mean, it's not at the intersection. The problem is downstream. So again, so that, so that drainage may have no, may no effect into the in, uh, improvement intersection. We don't know yet, but again, so all of this needs to be evaluated. And um, these are existing conditions, I, the way I look at it. So we want to, you know, to expedite the process, I, 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 I had to find money to help the two departments to, to try to solve these issues. Uh, otherwise, it's, a, it's another, you know, it's, a, it's more challenging in terms of meeting schedules. So I'm trying to expedite the process and find money in, in uh, closing out 
home to school project and stuff like that to find money to 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 help out in terms of getting these other things uh, implemented. I don't I don't think it's worth it. It's very hard to find a perfect world here. I think I think it's the the effort is being made to expedite both the school construction as well as the secondary constructions, which is the uh, the stopping the drainage and, and traffic intersection issue concerns. Um, so it's a, it's a it's a cooperative effort, but the timing is going to be very challenging. So we need to continue to to push in terms of staff as well as from council to to continue to push these issues and support these issues. Um, because you know we in a perfect world we'll sit back and you know do one thing at a time in 10 years maybe build a school it just it's just not realistic in terms of like you know it, um, we just don't uh the effort here is very important to to to, to expedite miss young you came back thank you i, I yes <laughs> <laughs> i never left right um to 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 Greg's point, um, with all the construction just based on this project, in addition to other projects that are going to be going on in, in South Norwalk, um, traffic is just going to be a mess. And so I'm just wondering, are there, and maybe this is not the place to ask, and it might be a DPW question, but are, 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 can we require folks to use um, Martin Luther King Drive at, you know, and, and maybe not South Main or when school is in session at certain times, um, depending on when the work is going to be done. There has to be some sensitivity to traffic when we've got five, six projects going on within, you know, a four, maybe six block radius is, is concerning to me. Um, and it may not be you, Adam, uh, Alan, to, uh, to, to answer that, but is there consideration given to that in your discussions, in your world of planning and land? I think I think a lot more discussion and planning needs to be done. Um, I think the first step here is allocate money so that they can they can look at the how how the intersection reconfiguration is going to happen. And, and the draining issue where the where the problem is. So um, our activity for school construction within the property limit, except some sidewalk around the, the property line. Um, but yes, when we when we talk about you know roadway alignment and stuff, it, it affect the intersection. So uh, we will continue to sit down. I think I think the, by allocating these monies, uh, it's it's a it's a good first step in terms of getting getting it started and get. We really don't know what the what the issues are with, with the drainage and how uh traffic mobility is going to look at to what how how much improvement they want to do so it is part of a, a continued development in terms of strategy and planning on all these or when they're going to do how they're going to how they're going to do what they need to do how they're going to do it when they're going to do it so that still needs to be to come so um we'll continue to work with the it's really they will they will be taking the lead more than i am uh, because I'm focusing on the building and the property, and they 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 know our schedule, and they need to to the extent they can. We we'll try to 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 figure out a strategy to do that. So I will work with them to figure figure something out. Uh, it's a uh, it's never going to be perfect, but at the same time, it's all we we're going to do our best. Thank you, and and maybe some sort of communication system or or, or process. Um, for residents if they like to know. I don't know, being able just to communicate a little bit more about the projects. And, and maybe that's something that we do as a council or said, I, I don't know. We put on the website, construction website. <laughs> but we always got to direct people to that. You know what yeah. I mean? It's, about, it's all just about communicating. Even if it is, here's the website to go to. How do we disseminate that? And we can kind of be creative with that. But thank you for all this. It's a lot going on. Yeah, you know, the parents will be thinking about going to the website, right? Because, um, right. you know, it's going to be talked about in the schools and everything. But, you know, for the residents who live there, the people that travel through there, it's very heavily traveled. They need they need that information, too. It's going to be a very care. It's going to have to be a very carefully choreographed dance. Essentially. Yes. 
you know, um, and it's going to require a great deal of, of uh, collaboration between the departments. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, anything else on that? Okay. Okay. Great. Moving forward, our last item. Almost ten o'clock. <laughs> uh, item E: Review bids for building fire alarm and sprinkler inspection maintenance services and refer recommendation to council for action. Authorize the purchasing agent to issue a purchase order for MJ Daily LLC to provide life safety services, fire alarm and sprinkler services, and inspections for various city buildings for an initial term of three years in the amount of forty thousand nine hundred eight dollars and twenty cents plus two one year options. Effective dates from 7 1 2023 to 6 30 2026, and to one year options from 7 1 2026 to 6 30 2028. Account numbers noted. Will someone move that item, please? Mr. Huberman, thank you very much. Um, and um, yeah, that's mine. Go ahead, Alan. Yeah, this is, uh, this is something we do every year uh, as required by building code that. that fire alarm systems and and the sprinkler system need to be tested uh tested certified and whatever so we have all these things. the reason why all these account number each one is what each one of these account is uh one building so it's all of i don't know it's like 12 12 buildings so all together it's uh it's a uh, how much is this it's a uh, forty thousand a well for proposed bits and that's what number they came back at so we have the money in these operating accounts. So every year we get new operating accounts, uh, operating money, and it will be assigned. Those those accounts will be assigned to uh, assigned to this this contract. Okay, very important. Um, any questions or comments, Mr. Meek? Uh, yeah, unrelated. But before we depart, I just wanted to thank staff, Joanne, Michael, Bill, and Alan for your. Um, staying with us tonight appreciate your support thanks thanks for saying that much appreciate it okay um all right let's uh, i'll call for vote then on item e all in favor please raise your hand opposed abstentions all right that carries unanimously Yes, it was a, it was a very long meeting. However, uh, we really covered a lot of really important items um, tonight. So, uh, so well done. Thank you all. Thank you to the. I, I, I think Tom Tom Livingston knew that this is going to be a long meeting. That's why he got the <laughs> council still hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> you can't leave. Alan, I'm, st Tom. I'm still here, Alan. Yeah. No, <laughs> oh, no yeah. hey, so Tom, I didn't hey, get away from anything. Tom, there, there's no <laughs> overtime in the budget. Sorry. <laughs> Chief of Staff never rests. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again, everybody. Have a good all night. All right. Uh, motion to adjourn. Yes. Okay. Great. All right. All in favor. All right. Good night, everyone. Thank you.